and we are live good morning everyone and thank you so much for tuning in for this awesome stream of benchmarks if you're new to this channel welcome to python simplified my name is maria and i'm here to help you with all kinds of stuff actually i have this stream running <laughs> in the other room i'm gonna have to turn it off sorry guys give me five seconds my apologies otherwise i'm gonna hear myself and it's gonna drive me crazy five seconds i'll be back right away Haha, <laughs> I am back. So sorry, guys. I've been having some issues with this stream. I couldn't set it up on YouTube for some reason. So I ended up going back to my StreamYard streaming service, paid a bunch of money for it once again. <laughs> and yeah, there's that. So yeah, I was testing with my television and I forgot to mute it. I'm back. Cool. So thank you guys so much for joining in the comments. Hello, hello to Josh, to Juan, to Beluga. Hello, Badger as well. Hello, Riyuya. Hello, Muhammad. And ah, it's it's different. It's not Muhammad. Muhamdu. Hello. Um, hello, guys. Chris. Hi, everyone. Glad to see you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Katrina, you're going to love this one. I'm already telling you, you're going to be a huge fan of this stream because you're featuring in it. Yeah. I'm comparing your code in this stream. I'm actually. I've pulled out some of your solutions from the comments and I'm including it in the benchmarks below. Katrina wrote some amazing code and yeah, you'll see it soon. Cool, so we have gathered here today to do some benchmarks. So in the last dictionary comprehension tutorial, I've asked you guys which approach you think is faster, the zip function or the range function. And today we will answer it. So I borrowed a bunch of code from Badger let me pull out one of his comments. Q's Eminem. Okay. Guess who's back? Okay, I understand. That's why we get along so well with Badger. Actually, I had that in mind from the get-go. Guess who's back? Back again. But I didn't want to say it out loud because I don't know if the current Eminem is the same Eminem I remember from childhood. But yeah. Um, cool. Yep. I'm back. Glad to be here. It's been a while since I've been streaming. Happy to see y'all here in the comments. Cool. So let's get on it. So I've borrowed some code from Badger. You can find his GitHub, uh, a link to his GitHub in the description. You'll see this page. It's his benchmarking code. It includes a bunch of decorators, which I haven't covered on this channel yet, but I'll, I'll try to give you a slight background with this. Let me enlarge it. There you go. Very interesting code. Check out his GitHub account. There's all kinds of nice things you'll find here. Yep, let's get on it. I have my handy dandy Jupyter notebook here, and we'll start with uh, the benchmarks first, and then I'm gonna look in the comments. We're gonna we're gonna see what you guys are writing, and in the meanwhile, let's move on with the code. Cool. So here we will import a module named Faker first, and this module basically generates a bunch of fake data. We don't want to work with actual data. We want to fake it. So. What's going on here? I'll give you a quick introduction to this uh, module. Okay, let me start a brand new cell. Shooby doo papa, <laughs> as usual. Okay, these are the parameters we will need here. And actually, we'll also need the list size, which I'm also copying. Okay, we'll start it slowly, slowly. Okay, first we'll understand the data we are working with. And as you may guess, it's a list of names and it's a list of professions. So let's make a tiny, tiny list. Okay, let's start with this and we'll see exactly what the result of this list are. So let's print names and let's run this cell. Go up, beautiful. So you get to see all kinds of names in here. Now, these may be names of real people or there may be a combination of a bunch of names and last names. but the key note is that we get to fake our own data. So it's awesome. Okay, same goes for profession. So if we'll print profs, okay, let's have a look. We have medical, laboratory, scientific officer, and all kinds of professions. So this is awesome, you guys. If you're looking to fake some data, definitely check this check out this faker module. I'm hoping to cover it soon. I'm thinking maybe I'll include it in a Django tutorial. I'm having some really nice ideas 
uh, with this one. So yeah, we are generating a list of names and a list of professions. So we are working with some like actual data with lots of lots of um, impact, not three names, which is very, very uh, difficult to measure um, empirically. Cool. So let's move on with the rest of the code that I borrowed from Badger once again. So we have here a bunch of cycles that we are measuring uh, within. We have this we have this decorator function, which basically decorators is like shortly speaking is when you call a function within a function, like when you put one function as input to another function. So you have this wrapper. So what we're doing here is we are testing the benchmark of each of these approaches. So the first approach is the for loop range approach. Okay, we covered it in the dictionary comprehension tutorial. If you guys need to find out more about it. Uh, ooh, hold on, hold on, you guys. Here it is. That's the tutorial I am talking about. Okay, you can find both the range and both the zip approaches, both the for loop approach and the comprehension approach right over there. Just giving you a background. I want you to have all the tools before we move on with this benchmarking code. Now we have the zip approach in the form of a for loop. And then we are comparing both of those in the form of a comprehension. Now, in addition, I've added some viewer code, which was very, very elegant. So if you're, if you don't feel like using a for loop for, for, for this, you can always use the dictionary function and the zip function in a combination with the two. I really like it. It's super elegant. And right now we will find out if it's faster than my solutions. Okay. Are you ready? Let's give it a run. Let's give it a run. And I'm going to do a decorators tutorial, you know, sometimes later on. Um, I'll explain everything in great detail. I'm not as good at explanations live. I prefer to do this um, <laughs> behind the camera. Oh, Sinisa, you're going to love this tutorial too, because guess whose code I'm including here? Hmm? Awesome. I'm super happy to see you guys. The only, I, I haven't seen Ilya here, but if he sees it, he'll be very excited. This code is by Ilya. Okay. It's written in Russian, so not many can read it, but yeah, that's his name. Whew. Let's give it a run. Let's see the results. Okay. It's going to take a bit of time because I've added an additional zero to the to the amount of uh, data I'm testing it on. OK, we are done. Let's have a look at the results, which my apologies, you guys, I cannot see very well because my screen is zoomed, <laughs> zoomed in quite quite a lot. Or actually, I have a better solution. I'm just going to move my head. It's probably better. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Ha ha. Check it out. Cool. So <laughs> back to the results. Hold on. Where's my stream yard? There you go. It's here. So we have here the for loop range, which takes the longest time to run. So the range function is definitely slower than the zip function, guys, for sure. I was rooting for it, but it didn't win. It is what it is. We have the range function in a dictionary comprehension, which is much, well, not much, but faster <laughs> than the for loop approach. And then we have the dictionary comprehension. Ooh. Then we have the for loop zip function. It's so complicated, you guys. <laughs> if you only knew my setup, I have my camera right in front of me in a nice tower that blocks half of my screen. So I'm trying to look from the other side. OK, we have the zip for loop approach, which is faster than the range for loop approach quite substantially. OK, and then when we use zip with dictionary comprehension, it's even faster. Awesome. But the best solution, you guys, as you can see, is Ilya's solution. So if you're wondering, how would you zip two lists together? How would you combine them into a dictionary? This lovely piece of code here will save you time and again. That's the best approach that I've discovered so far. Okay, moving myself back to the other side. And here's Mario back with with uh, the dog I'm babysitting, Millie. You might hear a bunch of uh, dog noises and the door closes. Hi, honey. <laughs> I'm streaming. Perfect. Awesome. 
So there you go. That gives you the answer between all those different approaches. Now, there was another exercise in that, uh, in that dictionary comprehension tutorial where we have created DNA strands and we have compared, uh, we have paired them. It was really, really interesting. So I pulled out some of your code from this exercise. And now I am talking about my method of doing so. Okay, this includes the generation of the, the values themselves. It includes Katrina's code and it includes Sinisa's code, which is really, really interesting, you guys. These are three distinct, interesting approaches. If you'd like to see them in the comments, definitely check out this list comprehension tutorial. I'm going to pull out the comment section where Katrina's method is pinned to the very, very top because I really, really liked it. And it looks, uh, judging by the likes, you guys liked it too. Okay, and we also have... Uh, Sinisa solution, which is below. Okay, I don't think I can find it here, but definitely check out the comment section. It's very, very interesting. I'm going to upload this code to GitHub after the stream ends as well, if you'd like to have a look. Cool. So are you ready to benchmark this? Let's run this code and we will see who's faster. I, I already know who, who's faster. But you'll see who's faster. <laughs> okay, it's running. It's running. It is happening. It's going on. It is going on. Okay, okay, we got the results. So it seems that's not the results I got yesterday, but <laughs> that's fine too. Okay, so Katrina's code is the fastest, okay? I thought that Sinisa's code was faster than mine, but here it appears to be less fast, okay? So let's try it again. Let's try it again. I had different results earlier. <laughs> yeah, Katrina, you got it. <laughs> you nailed it. It's really, really good. Good job. Oh, let's see. Let's see it again. Let's see it again. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm getting the same results. <laughs> Never mind, you guys. Never mind. Well, I guess I, I don't think I messed up anything within the code. I just think that it all lays within this random choices method. Um, which is a bit finicky, I guess. Oh, well, oh, well, but yeah, here's your solutions. Here's your answer. So that's why I really like going through the comments. I always get amazing ideas for upcoming tutorials or better solutions for the code that I've been presenting. That's why I really enjoy this, this entire community process rather than just me being me myself, you know, blogging and sharing things. Um, I really enjoy seeing what you guys um, are doing. <laughs> Sorry, noises inside the house uh, keep me uh, distracted. But yeah, awesome, awesome. Let's have a look in the comments. I want to see what you guys have to say. And I'm going to start with the last comments first, uh, unlike <laughs> my usual uh, routine where I'm starting from the first ones. We have Nikhil. You can take community classes of Python from beginning. So on that note, actually, I added this in the description and I'm going to announce it here. I figured out what to do with shorts, finally. You know, it was Mario's idea, my spouse, but I'm just gonna start teaching Python step-by-step step from the get-go in shorts so that if you don't have much time, if you're just looking to refresh some ideas or if you really wanna learn Python fast, that will give you a nice, nice background. You know, everything is super speedy. Okay, let's say what Badger is saying, let's see. That is why it does the test multiple times because it depends on what your CPU is doing at the time and such. You won't get the same result every time. I agree, I agree. But yesterday I feel like I got semi-similar results. Like in terms of speed, um, one function was always faster than the others. Uh, but yeah, the, the, when the random module is involved, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that's where things get a bit more problematic because you're right, it all depends on the on the um, CPU, okay, and the random generation engine or whatever it's called. Okay, greetings from Mexico City. Greetings back from Vancouver. Thank you, thank you for the nice, the lovely comments, you guys. Let's see, Brazil, oh wow. We're very international here. Thank you so much for writing where you guys are from. Hi from Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, what are double um, colons? used for in the square brackets. So double colons is just basically how you slice 
uh, things. You have you have the start, stop, step principles. If you'd like to find out a bit more about it, I have a nice NumPy tutorial, which kind of shows you what it does there, but uh, it's more NumPy oriented, but uh, we will get there. That's what I'm going to do in this uh, Python for Beginners series. Okay, uh, let's see, where's my NumPy tutorial? So yeah, you can find it in, let me remove this comment. You can find the solution in this tutorial, NumPy images exercise, also in this NumPy arrays exercise. So definitely uh, check it out um, if you want to find out about the brackets. Just from the top of my head, I'm not very good with definitions. Um, but yeah, my brain doesn't think very well um, when it's so hot. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm extra shiny today because when it's summer in British Columbia, <laughs> you don't want to be in a building like mine. You don't want to be with such large windows without much air conditioning. I do have an air conditioner running. It doesn't get here until the office. Uh, so yeah, my apologies. It is what it is. Let's see. Okay, you guys are uh, talking with each other. Beautiful Python decorators tutorial at ASAP Maria. Well, there's one way in which we can do this. I've posted a community post not too long ago. Actually, ooh, ooh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be showing you this. I have it here. Yeah, there you go. You can vote in this lovely poll, which I'll share with you right now in the comments. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to reach uh, this community post and it doesn't let me. What's going on? What's going on? Ha, I got it. I'm sharing it in the comments. Please vote there if you would prefer a decorator's tutorial and not a Django tutorial. Definitely vote because Django has the lead, <laughs> like a substantial lead. So please let me know um, what uh, what your heart desires, and that's that's what I'll do. Okay, your channel makes coding easy and fun. Thanks. Oh, awesome! I learned GUI from your channel's twenty minute videos and was able to solve my exam questions. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. Happy to help. Very happy to help. Um, yeah, it's especially when it comes to university work or like school work. Sometimes you are stuck on something and it's very, very difficult to solve. Sometimes you're you're you have this loop of not figuring out what the problem is. And sometimes when you see a helpful video, it, it's just it's a lifesaver. Uh, that's why I do what I do. <laughs> you know, videos like that help me with my um, grades and my stuff. So I'm kind of passing it forward. <laughs> as much as I can, right? I'm still a student. Uh, how to make it faster, switch to C++. Ah, yeah, yeah. But C++ has some disadvantages, folks. I I do love it for certain applications, but it is not, it, it takes much longer to create a program with uh, C++. It's not as, it's, it's not as high level as Python. You need to really go down to the very small, tiny details. You need to be very specific with data types and what your function returns. And it's it's nice. Uh, I do agree that it's it's an awesome programming language that a lot of us need to know. At least one C, <laughs> C language we need to know. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm a huge fan of Python, you guys. And it gets faster and faster along the way, you know, just because it's slow, it it's considered slow in our days doesn't mean that it's going to be like this in the next few versions of Python. So exciting things are coming up. We have a really, really supportive community generally in Python, not just Python simplified. And I believe in it. Who are uh, creating programming language programmists? Uh, programming language. Well, I guess if there's a need for a programming language, it's inevitable for it to be created. Um, so Python is great for data science, for machine learning. I think it solves a lot, a lot of problems, you folks. But yeah, yeah, cool. Cool. So we have Katrina. As always, the fastest way to loop in Python is not to loop in Python. That's right. Iterations take a very long time. If you can avoid them, marvelous, amazing. And we have ways to avoid them, for sure. This this dictionary function in a combination with a zip function are absolutely amazing. It looks elegant, it looks Pythonic, and it's way less convoluted than comprehension. So I, I definitely recommend it. Again, that's Ilya's solution. Cool. Let's scroll down to the comments below. I think you guys 
Oh, let's see who's who else is here. Ah, okay, Badger. Anyone who tries the challenges on our server, Faker is the module used to test if your code passes all the requirements. Cool, cool. So yeah, I'm going to have to use Faker eventually in a tutorial because this is very exciting to me. In days where data is so valuable, wouldn't it be awesome if we can just fake it? That would be amazing, you guys. We, we need to learn it. I really like your channel, Love from Pakistan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Love back from Vancouver. Let's see. Oh, we already see this one. It sounds so weird from Faker import Faker. Yeah. <laughs> it's generally a weird name for a module, but it kind of conveys the purpose of it. I, I enjoy it. Hi from Italy. Ciao or uh, buongiorno, buongiorno. Uh, what else we have here? They must be real people. We are getting tired of fake stuff in this world. Ah, it's just going to get faker and faker and faker. So. <laughs> it will. It will. Uh, hello, Maria. I want to make cast video to smart TV. Luke, YouTube cast video. The podcast? Podcasts are really, really nice on uh, on YouTube. I watch a lot of them. The funny ones and the political ones. <laughs> I'm not going to say which. I'm not going to disclose it. Okay, hi from India. Namaste. Hello, hello, dear friends. JA is here. Hello, JA. Thanks for joining. Nice to see you guys. And yeah, I'll be back to the recent comments. Uh, first time here, I've seen some of your videos and I like them. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you tuning in. Cool, guys. So I'm going to go to the very last comment. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh. we have requests and we have a super chat. Thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It helps me sustain this StreamYard subscription and all those things. Thank you so much. Uh, great Python wisdom. I recently created an AI assistant in Python. Lots of fun to code problem solve. Awesome, awesome. I, the reason why I studied Python to begin with was artificial intelligence. I wouldn't know that it exists if I didn't come from this field. So I am a huge fan of AI. Good, good job. You know, I'm, I'm curious. Did you make it from scratch, Kevin? Or did you use some kind of an API or some kind of a, a ready code, some, some open source code? Um, I'm curious to see how it compares to models that we create on our own. Uh, let me know. Let me know below. Uh, I'll, I'll look up. I'll keep looking. Uh, please make more videos on tips and tricks of Python libraries. Yeah, on it. On it. Will do. Will do. I go by your requests. When I see um, many comments of the same kind, I end up covering uh, those topics. Recently, I see lots of algorithms and data structures, comments, requests, and things of that sort. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready to it. I'm going to have my algorithms and data structures to test in September. After I'm done with this module, after I learned it properly from the university, I'll feel comfortable enough teaching it to you. But what we've done here is actually algorithms and data structures. We're kind of analyzing the running time of algorithms. We're doing it empirically rather than measuring time steps or space resources, but yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep it for a nice series on algorithms and data structures. So, Kevin, yes, from scratch. Awesome, awesome. I made some YouTube videos about it. Oh, that's so cool. Go to Kevin's channel right now. Check it out. Check check him out. Awesome. If you're into AI, definitely, definitely. Let's see what else we have here. Please uh, tutorials on Kiwi. Your Vaj, I made a bunch of them. You didn't notice? Let's see. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll go to my channel, not to my studio. <laughs> I shouldn't be in my studio. I, I maybe I maybe I, I should. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see if YouTube allows me to show it. But um, anyways, I was looking for Kiwi. Yes, Kiwi tutorials. That would be in my GUI GUI playlist, which you can find here. GUI apps simplified. And Kiwi has four, uh, five videos, you guys. Kiwi is wildly covered. So the first one is a simple Python app with Kiwi, where we are greeting Slenderman that lives in the forest behind. <laughs> it, it's an actual quote, yeah. <laughs> we have a mobile app with KiwiMD, which I, I love. I really love KiwiMD. I think it's way better than Kiwi. It's, it's basically built on top of Kiwi. 
and it gives you all kinds of cool design options with so styling as stylish as it gets okay we're discussing it over there part of this kiwi tutorial is converting uh binary to decimal and decimal to binary so i i have a concept tutorial teaching that and i have a second part of this video finishing this app as well as loading it to android which is this video i'm doing this with windows which is not a very traditional way of doing so if you have linux uh it will be way easier for you to convert your python files into android and you can do this with kiwi you can do this with kiwimd you cannot do this with kinter or i'm not aware of a way you can do this with kinter or other uh, gui libraries cool awesome so yeah I, I do have a bunch of stuff on kiwi i don't know if i'll be filming more kiwi tutorials if i will that will be a kiwimd one but i think i owe you a dear pi gui uh tutorial first i already built half of the application so i might as well film it yeah <laughs> let's move on uh yeah i've seen this comment already what else we have here russell love your videos short bite size that makes it easy to pick the parts i want to focus on thank you awesome i think you're gonna love my new uh python for be from beginner for beginners series in shorts it's gonna be even shorter Whew, guys it is so hot here it is so hot in my office it is insane <laughs> vancouver in the summer if you're wondering why i'm filming less that's exactly why this is how i look like most of the day <laughs> okay some say learning python without learning c would hurt me to understand how to code what do you think about it i think uh, people are insane when they're saying that <laughs> actually i i have a different perspective on this a very different perspective on this let, let me just uh let me just enlarge my face so uh the comments don't block me yeah so you can see the shininess a bit better Python is a very high level language, okay, which doesn't require lots of details. So you can, I find it's much easier to learn a language when you can just run through all the concepts and without focusing on tiny, small details that will confuse you. If you don't have any background with programming, starting from C++ or C Sharp or C or any C language is probably, I, it's very discouraging okay discouraging i don't think it's wrong because a lot of people started from it but if i would have started from c plus i don't think i'd be at this point of time where i'm enjoying programming so much i learned it in university it was nice but guess what i i suffered i suffered a lot through this if you want to see an example of my c plus skills by the way i'm going to pull up my github okay this is badger's github don't you love his picture here? It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, okay. Maria Shah. That's my GitHub. Where? Ah, okay. That's not GitHub. That's, that's something else. Okay. Now I'm on GitHub. Perfect. So I'm going to show you my C++ Juice application, which I've loaded not too long ago uh, to my GitHub. DJ Mixing Studio, it is called. I got a very nice score on it. I got 96 from my university on this application. So all it does, um, it's a DJ deck. I'll enlarge it. Um, you have two different decks. You are, you are loading some files from your file system. You can record some files with the recording component on top. You can select colors for your sound waves and it's it's a really nice application, you guys. So if you're building something that complex, obviously C++ is a better solution than Python, yes. But if you are building a simple app, if you're building some kind of a, I don't know, a, a recipe picker, <laughs> random recipe picker, it's pretty much of an overkill, you know? I, I, don't, I don't consider, not everything has to be the most efficient and best, sometimes coding fast, is important you know if it's your personal projects if it's not something that you're putting in your portfolio there's no reason to spend weeks on something that you can spend hours on and that's that's how i see the comparison between python and c plus what is do you want to create a program that works or do you want to create a program that works very efficiently okay saves a lot of resources and things of that sort if efficiency is very important if the programming principles are very important and you want to be very picky about it c languages otherwise python time and again 
What else do we have here? Let's see other comments. I love your content. Sending high five from Puerto Rico. High five back. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hola, hola. Okay, I'm just a beginner. Uh huh. We have beginners. We have experienced developers here. There's there's a bunch. Um, and Roy, you cannot uh, vote on both. You need to choose one. If you would like to hear about decorators, vote for decorators. If it's more urgent for you to learn Django, definitely. Um, well, <laughs> I guess Django already won. It's going to be very hard to beat it. That's for sure. I'm talking about the poll in my community. Okay, let's go to the last comments. Uh, I'm starting from the end, then I go up. Uh, I'm creating a training bot in Python using WebSockets and Asinshio. What do you think about recreate the same in Go? Which one would be faster? I, I'm not working with Go. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. If I knew, I would tell you. Yeah, there's there's lots of stuff that I am not not aware of, uh, but uh, I bet you that Badger might know. Go would probably be faster. Yeah, Badger is very, very smart. He's very experienced. Um, he's a moderator on Discord and on on YouTube here. We also have Josh Persistent helping us in the comments below. I pulled the restrictions of the comments a bit uh, higher. Hopefully, we're not going to get any annoying bots interrupting us today. <laughs> And yeah, oh, we have another super chat, is it? Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nikki. Delphi, it's been so long since I've seen you here. Hello, hello. Bul Bulgarian, okay, we got some Bulgarian cash here. That's perfect. That's awesome. I'm going to visit Bulgaria soon, hopefully, hopefully. It's, it's a go-to destination. I need to visit Bulgaria, which is my, my spouse's, um, which is where my spouse is from. And I need to visit Georgia, which is where my dad is from in Europe. So when I'm planning a trip to the Middle East or Europe, it's a must. I'm going to have to do it. Um, you need to have something. Oh, you guys are talking to one another. Perfect. <laughs> okay. What else do we have here? I've been using Python at work to quickly process Excel spreadsheets. Ah, I bet you were using pandas. Uh, I don't need to run them multiple times. So development is way more important than runtime for me. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Actually, on that note, hmm, I'm, I'm working on something that you guys will be very excited about. It's real-time data in Python. Okay, and we will do this for a uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Okay, I'm working on this. I'm not sure when I'll finish it, but I know that a lot of you guys are excited about it. You might use it for your neural networks or artificial intelligence models. Maybe we can predict uh, how's the market going to look like. I don't believe that it's very possible because people like Elon Musk with one tweet, they can, uh, <laughs> they can change the entire market, but we'll see. We'll find out. Uh, so yeah, working on real-time data using something very similar to pandas but not pandas okay i'll i'll review it so uh, what else what else do we have here katrina at work being able to code quickly is more important than being able to run it quickly awesome awesome perfect i thought it's the other way around i thought it's it's well i guess in the end of the day especially if you're working in a team and you and you're in charge of something that needs to be executed you can always improve it further you can always send new updates and you can always uh make it run better and faster and nicer. Uh, but yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, I was waiting for like some dramatic zoom on her face. No, you're not going to see that. That's not, that's not going to happen yet. It's a 4K camera, Badger. If you zoom so much on my face, holy smokes. <laughs> you're on Twitch. No, I am not on Twitch. Um, I've looked at their streaming conditions, and if you're a partner, you need to exclusively stream on, on uh, Twitch, which is not something I want to do. Uh, do you have a Telegram channel? I am using Telegram, but I do not have a channel there. I'm trying to stay away generally from social media. The least data I share, <laughs> the happier I am in general. Uh, but yeah, I have a Twitter. I have a LinkedIn, which you can find here. Uh, right? I'm writing all my social media um, both in the description, both you can see it running on the screen. Cool. Ooh, sorry, I need some. I need some uh, drinking. Uh, mm. I really needed this, guys. Cool. I will definitely look deeper in that faker. What can be done? Awesome. Yeah, me too. Me too. I I haven't heard of it 
before, which which is, I don't know, it's very exciting to me to find new modules to use. So um, what I envisioned for the Django tutorial, so at first I was thinking about making uh, making a tutorial connecting a database uh, to JavaScript, to HTML, to CSS, like the whole package and hosting it as well. That was my initial thought. But then after I discovered Faker, I was thinking maybe I should make some kind of a mechanism where you get to customize fake data and then download it in CSV files. That's what I was thinking. For folks that are not, you know, very familiar with Python and don't have the time <laughs> to uh, run some code, maybe they would like a GUI interface, um, a web interface, sorry, rather. <laughs> okay. I would like some ML videos. I'm currently learning that field. I enjoyed NumPy stuff a lot. So Sinisa, I have a play. I don't know if you're aware because this, I, I haven't filmed any uh, any machine learning or deep learning tutorials recently, but I have a whole playlist on AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning simplified. Okay, that's that's the playlist I mean. So we start from a very, very quick introduction to uh, to artificial intelligence in general, talking about supervised, unsupervised learning, uh, reinforcement learning, the differences between them. And then we move on to more exciting stuff. This introduction to neural networks video will give you a very, very good background. Very good background. It's one of the best videos I've ever filmed. You guys will enjoy it a lot. Perceptron, I'm getting lots of traffic. Compares to my other uh, tutorials on the topics, I'm getting lots of traffic there. So Perceptron is a single unit of logic in the neural network. It's a single decision of yes or no, on and off, true or false. Okay, so this this really gives you a basic example and it kind of guides you through. Now, what I'm showing you guys is very simplified. If there's something that I'm doing well is this artificial intelligence uh, series for sure, okay? We have cross entropy loss, we have gradient descent, and we also, I think, it, well, if, if you like NumPy, uh, Sinisa, you're going to love this one. This one is training a basic neural network without any fancy artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning uh, libraries. We're only using NumPy and Pandas. There are not traditional libraries for this, but we are practicing our uh, ability to um, the math behind what we do. Uh, we don't have any fancy shortcuts that... Um, that frameworks like uh, PyTorch and Tens TensorFlow are providing us. We are doing everything from scratch. This will really help you understand all the processes if neural networks is what you seek. Now, in terms of machine learning databases, actually, I started working on this series. You guys are not watching it, though. <laughs> not many of you are, so I assume that there's not a lot of interest in it, so I kind of moved on to other things. But if I see more and more requests on machine learning, that's what I find the most exciting. Okay, that's why I started this channel. It was supposed to be Go AI. It wasn't supposed to be Python Simplified, okay? Changed my mind along the way. So what you're learning here in this machine learning databases tutorial is how to load databases through your code. You don't need to download anything, you know? You don't need to look for Pascal or special databases. You can access everything through PyTorch, okay? And then if you're curious about how to predict uh, for example, you have loaded an artificial neural network that somebody else built for you and you want to test it on your own images. So, for example, you want to show it an image of a cat that it has never seen before. This inference with Torch Tensor RT, that's the tutorial that will tell you all about it. Extremely for beginners, okay? But it's also including some benchmarking so you will see faster ways of doing things. It also includes some Docker commands, okay? So... Um, it will give you a bit of background. And yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, these two tutorials are very, very old. I don't, you, you can watch them if you're if you're dealing with a bag of words, for example, it's a, it's a nice algorithm uh, that we use, that this will be very helpful. We are basically creating a neural network that tells a story. We are teaching it on some children books. There's the Brothers Grimm books, there's Alice in Wonderland and things of that sort. And then based on that data, it determines um, you give it a sentence and it completes your uh, your chapter or book or whatever you, you let it do. So if it was smart 
<laughs> I'd be more excited about this neural network, but it's pretty stupid. It needs some optimization, which is something I didn't do. Um, and optimization is arguably a much longer process than everything else. So yeah, yeah, I have a bunch of uh, machine learning tutorials, deep learning. Yeah, it's more relevant. Check them out. Check them out. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Delphi. Okay. I, I see you were here before the super chat. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's scroll down to the new comments. Okay, we, once again, I reached a spot where I recognize some comments. I'm back to the lower parts. Okay, what programming languages do you know or do you only know Python? Nobody knows only Python. Does, does anybody only know Python? I think that uh, a lot of folks, myself, I started from HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Okay, Python is something I learned very later on in my life. I didn't start from that. Uh, C++, I love, I love C++. It's a great language. It's awesome. If you have some background with programming, what else do I know? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think, I think that summarizes everything and nothing, nothing comes to my mind. <laughs> that's all. I, I think that's enough though. <laughs> well, SQL too, right? SQL is also, I guess, a language, not really programming. It's database, but still that's, that's a language. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a black summer, you are not late. You are not late. We are still on. We, I have finished the benchmarking. Okay. I can share it with you. If I didn't, ah, I closed it. Okay. No, you, you're going to have to, uh, <laughs> start all over again and look for it, but I'm, I'm going to upload this file to my uh, GitHub later on. Uh, cool. Hardik, great to see you here. You should make a tutorial for speech recognition using deep learning. Uh, sp speech recognition is uh, is a bit more complex than uh, image recognition for me, at least like from my perspective. Uh, if we will focus on deep learning, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna use the example we already have, which is an image classification neural network. Um, that's what. At least after I cover this, I can move on with other stuff. Okay, so so. <laughs> we need to we need to finish it first okay what else oh live question what is the pomeranian name she her name is millie and she's very quiet now oh wow she's very very quiet i don't know what happened Maybe, I, I guess uh, she ran too much mario took her to uh to a walk this morning and uh he he really likes to get her to run <laughs> and to let go of a lot of energy so maybe she's tired Okay, one request. Could you make a video on creating password manager in Python, especially data security? Password manager. So, okay, so there was a project. I remember vividly. There was a project in the previous code gem, which I covered in one of the tutorials. I'm just going to have to find it here. It's in my uploads section, isn't it? Yeah, I was uh, covering your project. Hmm. Yeah. I, ah, it's in the video section. Sorry, guys. There you go. Reviewing your projects. You can find an example of a GitHub repository that builds such a password uh, manager with Kinter. Um, I did cover generating random passwords in my previous tutorial of dictionary comprehensions. That's the one that you can see right over here. Okay. So just click on it and check it out. It's towards the end of the video. But if you're generating passwords and if you're trying to create them in a secure way instead of using random please use secrets okay one of the comments under the dictionary comprehension explains why um random is called random but it's not not as random as it gets you know you can trace this algorithm back and it's easy to do so if you're using secrets it's much more complicated to do so so um if you're into cybersecurity and things of that sort secrets is way more secure okay secrets module pip install secrets. You'll find it. Uh, okay. What program? Uh, I've been here. Uh, okay. I've seen this. I've been here. Uh, more comments. Please make a data structure and algorithms playlist. Yeah, I code for speed. I spoke about this a bit earlier. I uh, will do this. I just need to finish learning it myself. <laughs> this is the module, the last module I'm taking uh, in university for this semester. Um, I already have algorithms and data structures one, which I mastered, but to tell you that I understood what I was doing, I can't, 
I can't. It, it was very complicated. I don't know how I got such good grades. Um, <laughs> we'll find out if, if I got it right uh, in this semester, too. AI is a bit far from reality. How come? No, no, it's in. It's in. Even specific tasks based AI have lots of complexities. One day we will mimic brain, I believe. Um, the, the thing about AI that it, we call it narrow AI. It is very good at a specific task, but when you're trying to make another task with it, it's not going to know much. So if you're training a neural network, if you get it to be an expert in goats, if you show it a picture of a giraffe, it's not going to understand what it is. Okay, so it's great with goats, but in order to create an actual an actual life form that that thinks and teaches itself, it, it's a process. Okay, and I don't think we should do it. <laughs> I actually, I think it's playing God, you know. But since we thought of it. I bet you we will figure it out. I just hope that normal people, good and freedom-loving people, will figure it out and not enslave us um, like you would see in Terminator and movies of that sort, Matrix, right? We, we, we have all kinds of examples of AI going wrong. Uh, we don't have a lot of examples of AI going <laughs> useful, okay? What else do we have here? I mean, like, can we mimic the brain with Python? I couldn't find much content on this. You cannot mimic a brain, but you can mimic, not at this point of time. Maybe somebody can, I'm not sure. But uh, you you can mimic a train of thought. So if, if you check out my uh, artificial intelligence playlist, you will find it over there. I give really, really good examples of like, so... For example, one, it's all about input. It's all about training data, okay? So the only reason why we are able to, to create AI and why it's a thing, why it's not science fiction, and it's actually science, is because we have lots of processing power these days. We have incredible computers that can run tasks in parallel so we can make very complex calculations very easily. And we also have lots and lots of data. A lot of this data, you're not even aware that you are voluntarily providing to all kinds of companies. So once you have all this data, you can look for patterns in this data. And once you recognize those patterns, you can predict things, right? So again, I'm not going to go into too many details. Uh, AI is absolutely fascinating. It's one of the most interesting things I've ever heard of, okay? And AI is being used in our days in many, many, many cases. And in many, many cases, it works amazingly. Shopping recommendations, for example, commercials, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, recommendation systems, all of this is, is AI based. The algorithms we're talking about, YouTubers are talking about are all based on AI. It's a bunch of neural networks connected to one another and it's work. It works. Uh, same goes for autonomous vehicles. Tesla is driving on its own. You can park even Ford. I believe like Ford trucks can park on their own these days. So yeah, there's, there's all kinds of AI applied in our life more than you think, more than people admit. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to go into it. No, no. Um, okay. What else do we have here? Ivan, keep up the good work. Your videos are really useful. Spasiba, spasiba, spasiba. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you are not replying to me. Sidu, I try to. <laughs> I try to. If you only see how many comments I'm dealing with, it's 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 quite the challenge. So what usually what usually YouTubers do is they reply to super chats. Now we don't have a very big community, so I don't expect you to <laughs> super chat me. Only if you're very rich. <laughs> only if you have some spare bucks and you want to help this channel grow. I, I always appreciate it, but I'm reading all your comments regardless if you pay me or not. Um, well, I'm trying to read all your comments, okay? <laughs> if I don't reach you, I'm so sorry. If you have something very important to say, maybe send me a dollar. I get it. Um, it's popping on my screen right away. I see super chats like that, okay? By the way, if you like videos of that kind, if you like streams of that kind, please like this stream. Please share it with the world. It really helps with spreading the world, the word, the word. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So what we have here, Katrina is using Flask for websites. Um, I'm using Wix. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to admit it, but my uh, my blog, pythonsimplified.org, is not even a Python, doesn't even have a Python backend, which is ridiculous. But uh, yeah, Secu for security purposes, for ease of use, I'm using Wix. Um, if I'm creating applications so far, I've been doing this with Flask. I've been doing this with uh, JavaScript, Node.js. 
Uh, I, I do like JavaScript. I, I've been a bit nasty towards JavaScript in my PyScript tutorial, but I do like JavaScript. It's one of my favorite languages. It's very nice. Well, excluding the for loops, <laughs> which could be more Pythonic, but whatever. Uh, I do like JavaScript. But yeah, Django is next on my list. I'm hoping to figure it out with uh, with the cloud interface of Wayscript. If I can't, I'll be using the desktop app they have, which, which I'm testing it first. Um, how well of an AI assistant can we make with Python? Hmm. AI assistant, like, what do you mean? You, you mean like, uh, like Iron Man's assistant? You're not gonna make one. It's not gonna happen. You know, <laughs> there's Alexa, there's um, Siri, but again, it's it's something that Apple, it's, it's something that uh, Amazon made. They have lots of employees. They have so much computing power, and uh, yeah, I I would say that you can start making an AI assistant, um, and let me know how it works. Yeah, there, there's plenty of open source code you can find uh, online uh, that gives you give you some extra tools on that. Uh, okay, I'm back to the comments that I've been reading. So down, down, scrolling below. Let's see, Marcus, I began with Python some time ago, but I think that for me is required to study some theoretical aspects related to the branch. Can you recommend me a good textbook? Ooh, textbooks. It's something that I haven't, I don't have many textbooks. What I usually read is is, uh, is articles, things of that sort. I don't, I'm not a big fan of videos, but I have a lot of resources from my university. I can look into it, but if you're looking for a theoretical aspect, uh, Marcos, maybe try looking into uh, Coursera, maybe look for some courses. I had a, I had a stream not too long ago where I was sharing some nice resources um let me see if i can pull it out yeah this one do you need a tutor see this 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 beautiful video check it out click on it i'm sharing lots and lots of resources there free resources some of them are actually from my university and you guys can access them so it's really nice um yeah check it out it's not textbooks but um it's full-blown courses with quizzes and and you know everything you need everything you need should be there okay you're a Pythonic guy and you're using <laughs> Wix. <laughs> Please don't call FBI. No, don't. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble, but yeah. <laughs> I am, I am. That's the biggest irony. But yeah, well, I'm, I'm working on something, something different, okay? Um, actually, my, my, my friends are working on something different and I might tag along. <laughs> um, let's see, I began, uh, I've read this one. Display data from database in Django. Yeah, that's that's definitely a plan. I've uh, I've asked you in a poll on my channel. What do you think? What do you think about uh, which tutorial I should film next? Uh, databases in Django is definitely one of them. I just not I'm just not sure if the next tutorial will include databases because I I want to test this Faker module. I, I'm really excited about it. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely part of the plan. Did I miss the zip versus range discussion? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did it uh, at the very beginning. You can you can uh, revert it back uh, to the start of the stream. You can check it out. The best the best approach is zip, not range. Range is slower. Okay, we we can discuss why later on. I'm gonna pull out the the actual code behind those two algorithms. We can can definitely arrange something else later on. But uh, zip is most certainly faster. And actually, dictionary comprehension is not the fastest way to take two lists and um, combine them into a dictionary. You basically use a, well, actually, I'm going to type it in the comments. You basically use a dictionary function. You then wrap it in a zip function. And then you put two lists together. So list one, list two, voila. I shared it in the comments. Check it out. That's the fastest by far, by far. Okay. But yeah, I'll share my code on GitHub after this stream is done. Uh, you'll be able to test it on your own and you can use it for your own functions. You know, you can already, hmm, you can already check out Badger's code. Uh, I've shared it in the description and you can actually apply it on your own benchmarks on your own functions. That's, that's going to be very interesting. Cool. Uh, 
what we have here oh my gosh live delay is too much is it really ah i didn't know i didn't know uh speaking of parallel what is your favorite way to do parallel processing for example multi-processing or concurrent futures uh, etc uh, um, um, I rarely do this. <laughs> I use CUDA uh, for artificial intelligence stuff, but that's the only application of parallel computing I'm using. Um, just, you know, that's, that's my only, yeah, I have some tutorials on parallel computing. I have one about Torch Tensor RT and one about CUDA, but uh, to tell you that I dived in and I studied it rigorous, rigorous, rigorously, <laughs> I can't, but yeah. So uh, one day, one day. Uh, why always my comments deleted? Uh, Salem, did you, well, I first of all, I increased the strictness of the comments. So if you're commenting something that YouTube doesn't like, it's not going to let you uh, go through. Second of all, if you repeat the same comment many, many times, that's, that's the same. That's the equivalent of spamming. So please do not do that. <laughs> if I'm reaching your comment, I'm reaching your comment. If you really have something very important to say, please send me a super chat because that's what I can see on my screen. If I don't see a super chat, I'm just going through the comments that I can see. If, if I miss some, my apologies. Um, let's see. Thank you in advance for the answer. If you have lessons from Django, no, not yet. I'll be working on one very soon. Who else creates random color with OS? You random. Mm, I never heard of this particular module. Mm, interesting. Interesting. I don't think a turning machine will ever mimic a brain. The Turing, probably. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to scare you guys, but if we, we thought of it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It, it, people are already working on a different form of life, I would call it. Basically, AI that is truly AI. It's, it's, not, it's not dependent on training data. It can teach itself. That's what we call reinforcement learning. People are already working on that. So, yeah, in these days, we don't really see any Terminator <laughs> based machines but uh where the future goes when it comes to ai i have a very <laughs> i have a very interesting vision i just don't know if i want to share it <laughs> it's creepy uh it's it's very creepy you guys yeah uh, <laughs> let's see what else we have here uh, make some django videos please yes yes definitely a lot of you guys voted for one a lot of you have voted so I, i'll definitely do so okay Roy, I feel like I'm getting better at Python solving problems. I couldn't on day one, but many people have pointed me to JavaScript and TypeScript. When I first master Python as a first language, um, Python and JavaScript are quite like quite similar, I would say. And right now where we have PyScript, they are very, very similar, much more similar. You can run both of them on the back end on, and on the front end, which is what makes them so uh, special. Also, both of them are high level language. Well, I don't know if JavaScript is that. Uh, sorry, let me let me let me check regarding JavaScript. I don't know if it's actually high level because we are declaring the types of variables um, before we are we? Uh, let me do a refresher on JavaScript. It's been a while <laughs> since I looked into it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's been all about C++ in my university. Lately, I haven't had a chance to test my JavaScript uh, skills uh, yet. But yeah, I enjoy JavaScript. I don't think it's going to give you more tools than Python. I think that Python is a bit more intuitive. Um, JavaScript is great if you're into web development. It's, it's a language we use on the web. Python is something we can use on desktops. We can even use it on mobile phone applications. I have tutorials on that uh, key DMD mobile application tutorial. Check it out on my channel. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to learning programming languages, start with one, continue to others. You know, just first learn the basic principles. Okay, I have a I actually have a nice video where I have ridiculous makeup, but I'm still gonna refer you to that. <laughs> that video it's very it's it you you might find it very interesting where do i have it actually it's it's probably blocked by my head here it is python learning roadmap check out this video it's going to give you all the different steps you need to learn in order to master python kind of gives you a nice uh, walkthrough and also you can navigate to pythonsimplified.org 
discord.ca, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> I have both of these domains. Or mariasha.com. Oh, Python Simplified.ca is no longer on. Sorry, guys. So Python Simplified.org. Because Python.org, so Python Simplified.org also makes sense. And here we have this video navigator blog post, which I am sharing in the comments right now. There you go. Okay, and this will give you a navigator through all the things you need to learn uh, about Python. If you already mastered those, actually, I'm starting a new series of Python for Beginners in short. So it's going to take me some time to film it. But in the meanwhile, you have some examples here. You have all my tutorials organized in a, in a sequence, you know, it will get you up to speed. And if you cannot learn it from there, I also have a live stream which went up not too long ago. Do you need a tutor? where I am sharing additional learning resources, okay? Check it out. Um, starting from Python is a very good decision, guys. Those that tell you not to start from it, start from C++, they just want to torture you, honestly. <laughs> As somebody who knows both, uh, including JavaScript, uh, yeah, Python is has the upper hand for sure, from my perspective. I know uh, only Python, but I am interested in web front end, uh, eventually HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. Yeah, React is really nice. I, I, I need to learn React too. I started a bit. Uh, I can't tell you that I remember much. But yeah, um, Python is the back end, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, front end, which will be very, very interesting. Uh, so Sinisa, there's, there's a bunch of tutorials on my channel already covering this. But if you know Python already, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript will be a piece of cake. You learn it very, very easily. These are very intuitive languages. Um, HTML is using a bunch of tags. Uh, it creates the structure of a website. CSS is what styles the website. And JavaScript is what provides you user interactions with the browser, right? Um, it's very, very interesting. Uh, you can use it both for the back end, just like uh, Python. You ever used NeoVim? No, I'm not even sure what it is, but Neo is my cat's name. Very nice. <laughs> I might use it just because of that. <laughs> World wants to know what's, ah, okay, I've seen this one before. Okay, I've seen th these comments before. Uh, Vosk is a great Python library for speech recognition. Nice, we had a question about speech recognition earlier. Check out Vosk, okay? Definitely do. I have, haven't had a chance to work with speech recognition in terms of AI and ML. I worked with text input. I worked with, uh, with numeric input, you know, analyzing some, um, some, you know, predicting some stocks and things of that sort. I don't know how accurate it is, but it, it is something I've tried. Uh, transfer learning, it's something I've done. You basically take uh, the style of one photo and you apply it on another photo. Like you take a Picasso painting and you take your own picture and you make your own picture look like a Picasso kind of thing. It's something that traditionally uh, was used, was done with Photoshop, but we don't need Photoshop anymore, you know? <laughs> Not anymore, we don't. So yeah, cool. Thank you for the tip. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, okay, yeah, I've seen those comments before. So back, back to the bottom, guys, back. Back here, what do we have here? Uh, Python or C as first language. I always vote for Python, but actually, if you can start from HTML, CSS, you will have a much easier life. I, I do think that the traditional process of first learning web development and then moving on to uh, programming principles, something a bit more, um, a bit more advanced. That's the way to go. That's what I would recommend. That's how I learned. But yet, I learned HTML, CSS when I was a kid. Okay, I was 12. So. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a good example to this. When you're an adult, you can understand things much better. But uh, yeah, um, HTML, CSS is just the easiest thing that you can ever, ever see. Cool. Oh, Sinisa, thank you so much. Thank you for the live chat, for the super chat. Awesome. After New Year, Croatia will have euros. Oh, wow, you're joining the, the, the European currency. I think Bulgaria, too. I, I think so. Yeah, you guys are switching, eh? Wow. Are you happy about it or not? I'm not sure. 
Is it a good thing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, please, can you tell me how I can use Selenium without WebDriver? Because some, sometimes it's hard to set up Selenium script on free cloud servers with WebDriver. Or uh, please give me a solution for it. Um, I'm thinking I might have a video on Wayscript showing you how to run uh, Selenium headlessly. I might. I might. I'm not sure. Wayscript. I, it, it's at the very beginning I was filming a I was filming tutorials for them. Let's see. I'm I had a bunch of them. Plot Bitcoin CSV data. Could it be here? I'm not sure, you guys. I'm not sure. I had a hmm. Let's see, let's see. No, you know what? I had another tutorial. I think I think that they uh, removed it. Yeah, I'm gonna check in with uh, Wayscript to see if we can bring it back. It was a it, it was a bot that checks for a, a PlayStation. Uh, it checks checks for uh, whether PlayStation Five is back in stock or not. Checking it through uh, um, Best Buy, and since Wayscript is a cloud service, I used Selenium headlessly. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have a few parameters that you need to set up over there. I'll look into it. Okay, I I'll see how we can solve it. I'll try to I'll, I'll try to find those videos and see if we can load them again. Let's see how it will work. I'll talk to Derek uh, shortly. Uh, cool, but yeah, just look for a Selenium headless. You you should find a solution, but your cloud platform would have their own solution. I would imagine. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, it is what it is, but I don't know. Using Selenium headlessly, I, I think it kind of defeats the purpose of Selenium to begin with, because it's kind of it allows you to really mimic human behavior with having this browser. So you're not as limited uh, when it comes to um, you're not you're not being as blocked by the website you're accessing. I must admit that headlessly, I think you're getting blocked just as much as you would get blocked with mechanical soup. So I don't know. Well, I guess no. I guess mechanical soup is XML. It's not really JavaScript uh, dynamic website. So yeah, but give it a try. Look for Selenium headless. Um, it, it is doable. I've done it before. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay, this comment, I am done. In-depth, in-depth explanation of decorators, generators, and Lambda. Sure, yeah, uh, decorators is going to be next for sure. A lambda, I love Lambdas. I should, I probably should cover them uh, in a nice tutorial, but yeah. For sure, it's on my list. Thanks in advance for the answer if there are lessons from Python. I have a bunch of Python lessons. Check out my uh, tutorial, uh, my channel. Okay, under a tall tree. Does Maria have a video on OOP theory? It's one of my best videos ever, ever. You're gonna love it. Okay, let me pull it up. Let me pull it out. So first of all, you can find it in my uh, Python Simplified Video Navigator, which you can find on py pythonsimplified.org. And hold on, hold on. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. There's a lot of things to learn in Python. And I guess it's somewhere up top. <laughs> Sorry. Scrolling. There you go. This tutorial, okay, one of the best tutorials I have ever filmed, and I'm getting a lot of good feedback on it. Um, it's before I started wearing t-shirts, so <laughs> my apologies in advance, but yeah, that's that tutorial will really get you up to speed. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, you can find it on my channel too. You can find it there as well. I can share this, uh, navigator once again in the comments, <laughs> I'll be spamming y'all, <laughs> but yeah. And then in order to practice it, we have two extra tutorials, which will get you even to a better understanding of OP and classes. We have this class inheritance exercise with a guitar shop. Uh, if you're into guitar, guitars, um, that, that's, you're gonna be very excited about this one. And we have another much more visual tutorial where we create a random forest, uh, a random, a forest of random tree objects with different colors, different heights, different width. Uh, you can see it uh, behind me. And every time you rerun your code, uh, you, change this picture, which is really nice for gaming. So if you're uh, creating games and things of that sort, uh, definitely check it out. Now, there's another OOP tutorial, which I am planning. This one um, is going to be it's going to be along the lines of our PyScript project, uh, PyScript, 
Pi Game project. If you remember, I've created a card game with Pi Game. And um, basically, instead of having a single car, single enemy car appearing and trying to interrupt your, your normal your, your normal playing, we will load different types of cars. We will load, load trucks and, and limos and whatnot. Uh, so that's going to be another visual exercise, which I will work on as soon as you keep requesting stuff <laughs> on OOP, okay? I'm waiting, I'm waiting, okay? I've been learning Python for months and still find classes uh, in objects, methods, inheritance, functions, a bit confusing. Yeah, it's, it's all about practice. If you don't practice, it's very hard to keep things in mind. Uh, and what I mean in terms of practice is create personal projects. Okay, just, just think of something you're very familiar with, maybe a game of chess, maybe a game of trivia, or um, sinking ships, you know, things that you are familiar since you're a kid, Sudoku, um, and try to implement it with code. So first of all, create the functionality. Once you're happy with the functionality, move on with the interface, okay? And there's plenty, plenty of uh, um, GUI tutorials on my channel, which you can find. Uh, uh, if you're making a game, I highly recommend Pygame. It's very intuitive, very easy. And yeah, oh, we have another super chat. Thank you so much, Alper. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's awesome, you guys. I'm going to scroll up to see if I missed any super chats um, shortly. I'm not currently learning Python, but I'm still enjoying your videos. You're doing a great work. Keep it up. Alpha, I think I'm going to convince you to start learning Python. Yep. Yep. I'm going to, I'm starting a new series of shorts. Um, it's going to be short videos, step-by-step uh, -step Python learning from scratch, starting with data types and then, you know, moving on with the rest of the interesting things. Okay. I'll be back to those comments before. Let me let me verify that I didn't miss any uh, super chats. Let me verify. I'll just scroll to the very, very top of my code. Ooh, my code, my uh, comments. And nope. Okay. It was, uh, it was highlighting super chats earlier. Not anymore. Oh, well. Oh, well. Sorry if I missed it. My apologies. I'm on the comments trying to uh, reply to everybody. Okay. Cool, cool. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, please uh, tell me what you know about Python. <laughs> we need more than a live stream for that. <laughs> it's a very long conversation. <laughs> the uh Thank you in advance for the answer, the Django. Um, oh, hey, mommy. <laughs> Norman loves calling me mom. <laughs> yes, my child. Yes, my dear. <laughs> I learned a lot from her. Yay. Thank you. Super happy. Super happy. Remember, I'm still a student. <laughs> when you learn from me, sometimes check. <laughs> what about R? I actually, I was about to start learning R rather than Python. When I was thinking which artificial intelligence course to take, I found out the Harvard courses first and I got really excited. I signed up and everything. And then I, uh, I don't know, something didn't feel right. So I ended up moving on to AI with Python on um, Udacity, uh, which I'm very sorry that I paid so much money for. <laughs> you can find out more details in my recent uh, Do You Need a Tutor uh, tutorial, tutorial uh, live stream, this one, okay. I'm discussing all my experiences with those uh, courses in university and why I'm not a very big fan of nano degrees. Not a big fan of spending more than 15 bucks on a course in general. <laughs> yeah, I'm cheap when it comes to courses. You can find everything uh, online anyway, so you might as well do so for free. Okay, come on, guys. Time to rest in Python. Rest? Why not? <laughs> why, why rest? Time to be active. Let's do it. Uh, thanks for answering me. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll answer many times. Face, sure. <laughs> I generally use requests for headless stuff. I have one project that uses a Mac Macanize. I think I use requests in my beautiful soup tutorial. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful soup and requests are very, very good friends. In my university, they also use requests, but yours truly here submitted a project with Selenium. <laughs> I, I hope they're going to appreciate it. They, they didn't teach us their uh, Selenium, so I was trying to be special. I hope I didn't mess it up. I really do. I really do. And if you're wondering why the my Tkinter tutorial, uh, I promised you basically a, uh, a follow-up tutorial on my Tkinter application in which we convert it to an actual desktop application that we can uh, both uh, use on Mac, Windows, and Linux. 
the reason why I haven't posted it yet is because in the comments, there was a suggestion of how to improve my database because it was plain awful, you guys. It was plain awful, you know, how to turn it into a relational database. And that's exactly what I did. Now, by doing so, <laughs> I realized that it fits perfectly a you know, a, a midterm project that I was doing in university. So I ended up using it for my midterm. Okay, that's why I am not sharing this code yet. I'm waiting for them to check my midterm because when they do so, they don't know who submitted the project. So if they find out, hey, that's the exact code that Maria Sim from Python Simplified has on her GitHub, okay? Oh, this, this person cheated, right? They don't know it's me. So <laughs> I'm avoiding I'm avoiding sharing it for now. I'm waiting for the project to be graded and then we will move on with its Kinter, um, with its Kinter conversion stuff. How did I even get here? I don't know, I, Katrina, I don't know how your comment triggered it. I'm not sure. <laughs> My train of thought just, just went off, okay. Uh, Badger, but if I'm being honest, Python makes a lot of fundamental concept keywords that you would be exposed to in um, C. Yeah, there, there's a lot of like parallel stuff you can find in all programming languages, I think. In the end of the day, you know, control flow and, you know, object-oriented programming, these are concepts that are quite universal, right? Um, same goes with with type the, the way you store data data structures and things of that sort so yeah python uh, you know with lists you can store all kinds of data inside with arrays <laughs> you can't so it's all about knowing the difference between each data type and uh, how to move on from there i i i would start from python if it was me but again that's just my perspective some people like to be very specific um, and really dive into details. I like to see a general overview and examples of things and only then I move on with the details. That's that's just how I learn, but people are different. When will the video be posted? On on Django, you mean? Oh, that's 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 a good question. <laughs> I, I haven't started working on it yet because uh, I'm so busy with this live stream. <laughs> Actually, I'm working on a lot of stuff, uh, you guys. One of them is sitting here. It's it's merch. Okay, I'm working on some merchandise. And if you're a big fan of uh, tattoo art, you're gonna be a big fan of this. I'm gonna try to show it to you guys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if you can see it, but this this is what I'm working on. We still have some line work to do. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be pinup girls and computer hardware. Okay, that's that's the theme. I was thinking at first only computer hardware, but then <laughs> that's that's what Linus Tech is doing. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to copy from them. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll do some chicks and computer parts art. <laughs> that's what I'm working on. Yeah, and I'm yes, I'm I'm painting, I'm drawing it. And if you guys want to see how I'm tracing it live, I might be I might be able to do this live. Yeah, we we can participate in this. Uh, can participate together in the creation of this new merch. I like your eyes. Are they green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are green. Uh, in certain lights, they are. They might be blue, but yeah, they, they are green. And surprisingly, they don't interfere with the green screen. Surprisingly, but what's funny that if I turn it around, I actually have a blue screen on the other side of the. I'm pointing towards my green screen as though you can see it. Okay, there's a green screen behind me, <laughs> and there's a blue layer behind it. So when I'm using the blue, my eyes are getting. He, they're getting removed, you know, you, you don't see my eyes. It's really creepy. I filmed an entire tutorial like this. I was about to post it and they're like, Aah! okay, this is vampire Maria. This is, this is not going to work. So according to OBS, my eyes are blue, but according to reality, they're green. Depends who you ask, you know, <laughs> she will eventually get to your comment or someone will answer it here. Absolutely. Yeah. There, there, there's a bunch of folks commenting, um, Again, if you have something very, very important to say, you guys just uh, five cents or you know, 10 cents, send me a super chat. I'll be able to see it much more vividly, okay? Is there a video of complete classes on Flask? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, you mean like classes OOP? Mm, I didn't do an OOP uh, with Flask tutorial, but I have a bunch of Flask tutorials, actually two of them, two of them, one of them, where is it? Where is it? I'll go to my playlist. That's that's a bit easier to view. No, I'll go to home. It's a bit easier to view. Okay, in my GUI apps simplified playlist, you will find, you will not find it here. 
No, I did not include it here. Did I? Did I? No, I did not. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. So I don't I don't have a playlist for these tutorials. That's crazy. I should make one. I probably should. Okay. Maybe it's in popular uploads. Absolutely. So this is the first Flask tutorial. Simple web app with Flask. That's HTML and CSS. Um, I don't think JavaScript is involved over there. Okay. So HTML, CSS only. And then I have an additional tutorial of a complete app. It's a much longer tutorial. I'm showing you also how to host it on uh, my IDE Wayscript. And this is a groceries list application. Okay, Flask SQLite web application, including JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and all that jazz, okay? Awesome. Check them out. Check them out. I think you're going to like them. That's all you need to create a website. You don't need more than that. Um, that's, that's what I used. Yeah. Uh, cool. So back to the new comments. Back to the new comments. What programming languages do you know? Ah, we already covered it. Uh, C++, Python, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL. It's not a programming language, but I guess HTML and CSS is not a programming language either, according to uh, some folks. It's it's an argument. Like, people are arguing over it still. But, yeah. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Hardik. Have an amazing year. Enjoy. Great to see you here. Great to see you guys. Say happy birthday. <laughs> what takes you so long? <laughs> cool. What else do we have here? Uh, Maria, have you ever tried a Pi Simple GUI? Also, you said you will try PyDroid. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't had a chance to look into PyDroid, but Pi Simple GUI, I heard of them. Isn't it an open source project? Let me let me uh, check it out for a sec. I I'm I'm curious. So I have um, actually let's let's do it on Twitter. So Pi Simple. No, search it here. Pi Simple GUI. Check it out. Check it out. Python GUI for humans. Okay. Oh, interesting. So it transforms Kinter, PyQt5, and all the Qt stuff into portable, people-friendly, Pythonic interfaces. Interesting. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Sounds sounds really, really nice. There you go. Here's some happy birthday wishes. Uh -huh. oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Uh, I, I love you from Napoli. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lots of love back from Vancouver, from, uh, from British Columbia. Beautiful British Columbia. Okay. Maybe new guys can try to learn new language like Carbon. Experience is same for everyone. Yeah, once you master one language, move on to the others. There's nothing to lose. There's there's all kinds of nice things. But every language has its own advantages and disadvantages. It's all about finding what is working best for you. Okay. Uh, you think it's worthy to using base things at C++ OpenGL, at least for self. Practicing, absolutely, yeah. C++ is, will help you a lot with software development and things of that sort. You know, see, I would, if you're creating commercial software, I would definitely use a low-level language like C, C Sharp, C++, things of that sort. I would, I'm a big fan of Python, but I know that it has some limitations, okay? Um, you know, I'm very biased. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm, I'm also trying to be <laughs> as truthful as I can. <laughs> Okay, I complete fundamental course of Python, how to get more lessons at Kinter GUI. Ahmed, just try building your own application. Think about an idea, some kind of a project. And once you'll be able to start building it on your own by yourself, you will face all kinds of challenges. And the way to, to solve those challenges is to, first of all, look you know, I would say Google it, but like stack overflow it, you know, <laughs> go to all kinds of um, academies that may help you, um, things of that sort, look for look for articles. So when you do things on your own, when you're building things from scratch for yourself, it's very, it, it's much, it's much more easy to comprehend uh, the workflow and, and everything. It's much more easy to teach yourself how things are actually running. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> That's my uh, five cents here. 
Maria has a killer rig. I think if you compare to mine, it would be like a Ferrari versus Peugeot. You mean the computer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the computer is, I don't, I don't think, no, I don't think there's anything better for like commercially for like, sorry, for, for personal use. I don't think there's a better GPU at this point of time. There's the 12th gen um, so CPU, CPU guys, GPU. I bet you there's a 3090 Ti already. Okay. My CPU is one of the, the best. Okay. Actually the best on the consumer's market. It is the 12th gen intel cpu with ddr5 memory so my motherboard is also you know with ddr5 uh based i have a really nice computer and uh, nvidia was kind enough to send me a 3090 um yeah now they have 3090 ti i believe i need to check it out um and yeah i'm hoping to get a laptop eventually with similar specs to what i have in this computer um it's the zyphirius rogue I'm going to start saving up money soon. <laughs> For now, it's not even an option. <laughs> it's too expensive. Okay. You're sitting on a GPU. Not me. That's not me, you guys. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the artwork I've been showing you guys earlier. That's not me. <laughs> that's, um, that's uh, I don't know. I don't know who it is, but uh, she's very beautiful. <laughs> Chicks and computer hardware. That's, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Alec, привет, как дела? Привет, все хорошо, все супер, как у тебя, как у тебя? See, I'm not reading Russian that bad. In the last stream, I had I had a few comments that I was struggling with, but I'm, I'm reading Russian well. <laughs> it depends on the words. <laughs> okay, hi, really enjoy your channel. Any chance there is a way to update label when app loads? Always. What do you mean? But, uh, always, you should be able to. Uh, it, it's but it's very general gary you need to be very specific with this answer which what are you using kiwi uh tinter what's the yeah there's all kinds there's labels and all kinds of apps and and stuff um uh, somebody might be able to help you in the comments if you'll be a bit more specific please uh cool but yeah you, you can update everything everything is updatable you guys um yeah okay hey masha okay that this is how i know that we're talking to russian slash ukrainian slash soviet union uh do you use yaml yaml no no i do not use it if i if i was using it i would know what it is i i may be using it i don't know sometimes sometimes i'm getting all these abbreviations that i'm not uh, <laughs> i'm not aware of yeah and, and then i google them and sometimes those abbreviations are Google doesn't understand what I was actually looking for, and it's weird. I don't want to do this live. <laughs> um, rest as in website APIs. Ah, okay, okay. So capital R. <laughs> you forget that I'm reading your comments, and it's it's hard to uh, hard, hard to figure it out. But yeah. Um, for personal projects, I like playing with pictures. I done ton of stuff revolving around pictures. Even tried uh compressions but you cannot beat png it has like three algorithms i i do find that in terms of images python can sometimes be even better than photoshop like in terms of well i i guess photoshop is using some algorithms and ai based algorithms in order to enlarge and scale pictures if you guys want to see a proof of it um one of the projects in the recent code jam which i covered um which i covered in a tutorial that my head is probably blocking in a video that my head is blocking yeah there you go reviewing your project you will find an example of some code of viewers of this channel who were able to beat photoshop and i'm showing you exactly how seriously they beat photoshop with their algorithm so yeah it takes a bit of time but you cannot compare the, the people working in Photoshop, the amount of resources they have and the amount of years they put into this research. You cannot compare it with a two weeks project on Discord, you know, that, that we've done in a code jam. So people have done really, really good job, like really good job. So I highly recommend you to check it out over there uh, for some more info. Uh, thanks for useful information. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Thank you so much. Abdallah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I've seen those comments before. Awesome. Awesome, guys. So we can scroll down. Gary, sorry, Maria, I'm rushing a cooking dinner. I'm building an app in KVMD, but can't seem to get labeled to update with random text when it starts. Okay. Um, 
Hmm. Yeah, it's been a while since I've looked into Kiwi and, and the, the GUIs there. I cannot pop it from the top of my head, but um, maybe add me on on uh, Twitter. Do you have a Twitter account? I'm going to navigate to my Twitter. It is Maria Simplified or Maria Sha 888 there you go. Here it is. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm pointing you out to, to, I don't know how to use it. I don't know. I rarely use it. <laughs> how do I get to my, um, to my profile? Yo, yo, just, just show me my profile. Okay. No, never mind. But the reason why I'm pointing you out to Twitter is because KVMD is on Twitter. I'm, I'm following me, uh, him. He's following me. He's also here on YouTube very often. Uh, but yeah, if you have questions regarding KVMD. Uh, yeah, we can, can ask the actual source. <laughs> we, can, we can ask the person in charge. Yeah. Okay. We have a dating site block user. Yeah. Yeah. We had a dating site that was uh, starting to do uh, spam here. Blocked. Blocked. Yeah. I, I, I've done it. I'm blocking people. Can't believe it's happening, but uh, it's not a people. It's a bot. <laughs> Uh, is there a way to have a word with you? Wow, well, we're speaking now. I'm, I'm generally speaking publicly with people. The people that I do speak privately with are, you know, moderators and people who are helping me with uh, Discord, things of that sort. If you have anything, uh, yeah, if you have anything to say to me, why do you need to do this privately, right? I, I there's no reason, right? You don't really know me. <laughs> uh, okay, saludos. Saudações do Brasil. Okay. Hello. 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 Do you have a Discord then? Absolutely. You can find the link in the description. Uh, you can see it in the running strip over there. Uh, <laughs> Badger, she jinxed us. <laughs> Badger was just so happy that there weren't any spamming bots, eh? <laughs> and then suddenly, <laughs> I told you, I heard the bots spooling up their CPUs. <laughs> they were getting ready. Well, you know what? It's it's interesting because now YouTube has ways of bypassing them and it still doesn't work. <laughs> Just uh, people will be people. They'll keep making interesting bots. You know, my Twitter bot is still alive. Nothing happened to Lily Potter. She's still there. I've actually I've been trying to improve it for future tutorials, but it seems that it seems that a lot of people are have left Twitter. No. <laughs> I don't know, you know, maybe maybe because Elon Musk is out, you know, from the deal. I don't know, but, you know, I don't see as much uh, engagement there. But yeah, but yeah. Uh, do you ever get mind planks when coding? Like, like uh, mind farts, brain farts? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time, all the time. It's part of the process. It's part of the process. I get it way more, though, with uh, with JavaScript and semicolons and all that jazz, you know, or C++, God forbid, holy smokes. Try to figure out <laughs> where your error comes from in C++. If it's a compiling error, oh my God. You know, this app I showed you earlier, my uh, DJ Deck app, I, I haven't looked at it for a few months, you know, and I already got my grade and I was so happy. I was like, yeah, if I got 96 on this in a university, I'm going to share it with the world. I'll be so happy about it. I'll be like a peacock, you know, and look at me, you know, and I'm, and I was about to load it and I checked it. It was awful. Everything shifted. Everything moved. I had to change a bunch of commands in order to make it work. So juice as a framework for, for GUIs, what is wrong with you guys? Why would you change on me? You know? So, and it was in a span of a few months, uh, which was very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah. Uh, how can I contact you? Ali, you can have all the information, all the contact information right below me in this, sorry, right below me in this blue strip. See GitHub, LinkedIn. These are all my social media accounts. I do not uh, speak private conversations with people because there's it's 10, like there's 100,000 plus of you guys. It's very, very hard to, to make conversations. Uh, I do speak with some folks privately, but these folks, they, they heard about me like 
when I was nobody, you know, I maybe had uh, 300 subscribers. Nobody was watching my stuff and they've been supporting me ever since. So yeah, I have a very long relationship with some folks, you know, you can see that uh, we have, I do have some uh, <laughs> message, private messages on, uh, on Twitter. Yeah, I am, I am speaking to some of you guys, uh, but again, it's, it's a build up. Like we, we know each other for a very, very long time. Um, yeah. YAML, yet another markup language. You know what? I may have used it. I may have used it. Uh, I just, I wouldn't know that this is how it's called. <laughs> I use held, handlebars a lot. I used, uh, was it Jinja? Jinja, I used it. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of markup languages that I've uh, I checked out. Is it, is that the GitHub one? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I, I learn from trial and, and error <laughs> always. So if something doesn't work, I try something else and I don't always know the name <laughs> of the thing I try <laughs> if I'm very in a hurry. Udbav is here. Hello, hello, Udbav. Good to see you. It's very late where you are. I really appreciate you being here. Um, that's awesome to see you guys. Um, I thought you have a great raisin, not Intel. M no, no. Raisin has an 11th gen. Uh, CPU with DDR4 RAM. That's the most advanced they have in the moment. And it's nice for gaming. It does, it, it doesn't heat up as fast, but I'm not worried about it because I have a really nice liquid cooler. I have a very fancy one with like an LCD screen on it. And it's, it's really nice. I can change the cover. Of it. You know, I, when we were, so what happened with this, this new computer of mine, uh, basically Nvidia reached out. They were like, Hey, we have this, uh, 3090, uh, graphics card. Would you, would you like to, <laughs> would you like to get it? Yeah, I, I would. Right. And it requires a much better computer. If you ask me, cause my previous computer is in a pre-built, it's basically an Alienware that a lot of you are very upset about. I don't know why there was like a huge shortage of parts, you know? Um, for a very long time, people couldn't get any GPUs or anything, and I needed a computer. And I'm sorry, I found it on a crazy discount. I bought it, like, was it $2,000 off, like, the original deal? I found an incredible deal, so I, I bought it. But then, I'm not going to take the, the, the most advanced piece of GPU technology in the market, and I'm going to put it in a computer that is slightly outdated. So, no, I'm going to build a beast, beast, okay? If you're curious how it all happened, I do have a video talking about it my christmas miracle <laughs> there you go <laughs> but yeah i was that close to get a raisin i was that close you know because back in the day my the only part that i couldn't find was a ddr5 memory you couldn't find it anywhere there was no stock in any of the shops i've called australia i've i've called so many places you guys you will never believe nova scotia i i was really hustling and then i was about to borrow a uh DDR5, a few sticks from a, a fellow channel here in Vancouver. And I was and I was almost on the way to go there. I was I was like really ready. I went to uh I went to um like I I I didn't want to settle for DDR4 because it's not very future proof. There is already a better technology, right? A faster, a stronger technology of RAM. And if you don't buy a motherboard that supports this uh DDR5 technology, you are stuck with DDR4 forever. Because I'm not going to replace the, the the memory and the you know and the motherboard. It's already too much money, so I might as well buy what I want. Okay, so uh, yeah, in in the end, the the store manager just pulled out a bunch of random XPG <laughs> DDR5 RAMs from his office. But yeah, it was uh, it was very exciting. I'm, I told you all about it. But yeah, Raisin is great. It it has really nice builds. It's just still the last generation they still didn't produce as far as i'm aware maybe maybe something changed right uh, but yeah uh, cool 3090 ti prices have crashed hmm i wonder if it has to do with the the problems in taiwan i wonder if it has to do with the upcoming shortage i'm not sure I'm not sure there are there are some issues with uh, china taiwan right now um, and all the chips, all the chips manufacturing of most of the companies in the world, including NVIDIA, is done in Taiwan. There is a very nice uh, factory over there. Um, and yeah, there was like a huge political scandal about it a few, uh, actually a week or two ago. Yeah, I need to check. I need to check about it. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. If you guys want to see a live uh, stream on that when we are discussing things that relate to technology and, you know, current 
trends and things of that sort, let me know. Um, hello from Russia. Happy birthday to you. Very cool. Spasiba Alexey. It was for Hardik. He has a birthday today. So definitely give him some uh, nice happy birthday wishes in the comments. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, especially with server side rendering. Is Django good? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was the question. That was the question, especially with server side rendering. I'm not sure. I am yet to test Django in a way that I can give you a good answer for this. I played around with it very, very briefly. I was able to run like a basic application with it, but I, it's not enough knowledge to, <laughs> to compare it to other frameworks and things of that sort. So yeah, uh, keep it for later. We're going to do a very, very nice Django tutorial uh, later on. Uh, okay, and back to comments, which I already read. Uh -huh. Awesome. Awesome. So let's go to the bottom of the comments once again, once again. Let's see. GPU prices down because crypto prices are down. But are are people still using GPUs for crypto? Like for crypto? Mining crypto? Y'all are crazy if you do. There's a better technology for that. That's uh, <laughs> It's a lot of processing power. I don't know if it's economic at this point of time. Uh, Udvav, he got a new laptop. Okay, you got to tell us the specs. What kind of a laptop is it, Udvav? I'm so I'm excited. Um, Udvav is the only person I've seen who was doing databases on his phone. That was amazing, you guys. He was sharing a screenshot. I'm like, whoa, I didn't know you can do that. <laughs> I mean, what is it? MySQL, I think. I can't remember, but it was really, really impressive, you guys. Um, what else? So awesome, see girl in this industry. Anthony, there are so, so many girls. First of all, Katrina is here too, right? I'm not alone, I'm not alone. We have another, we have a very smart lady in the crowd, yeah. Um, what else? And, and actually most of my family, many of the women in my family are programmers. <laughs> you know? I have from like close family, it's myself, it's my aunt, and it's my second degree aunt. We are all in uh, programming, all uh, very pretty Ukrainian ladies. Uh, you, you crushin, you crushin ladies. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, 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 I cannot speak for myself, but I'm, I'm just reflecting your comments, apparently, apparently, <laughs> and comments on my spouse, whatever. But cool, cool. Women invented programming, that's right, that's right. Have you heard of Grace Hopper? Well, if you heard of the word bug, you must have heard of Grace Hopper because a bug wouldn't be a bug without her, okay? She had an actual bug in her computer. And oh, thank you so much for the super chat access code. I really appreciate it. We need more live videos. I'll keep doing this. You know what? Now that I paid 50 bucks for my StreamYard subscription, I might as well film uh, lives every week. I was about to um, try to kind of Kind of see if I can do this with YouTube alone, but it was so annoying, okay? Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much. We'll go live more often. Uh, we, just, we just need to figure out nice topics for it. Actually, I invited Geeks for Geeks for a live session about uh, job searching. I'm still waiting for a reply. I, hopefully, they'll, they'll come kind of join us on this channel because they have, I don't know if you guys have heard, but they started from um, giving advices on how to find jobs in high tech and things of that sort. I met with them on um, on the uh, uh, Google Teams not too long ago, and we, we, we spoke a little bit. So hopefully, hopefully, you'll be able to see them here on this channel. Um, th there's a huge time difference between India and, uh, and Vancouver, so hopefully we can make it work. I'm still waiting. Hopefully, I'll have some news for you. But yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, mining going towards a POS, so GPUs may be in less demand. Yeah, I, I think that uh, GPU is not a very efficient way to mine cryptocurrency these days. You spend way more energy than you earn. So, well, especially with Bitcoin, you know, or like really long chains, things of that type. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that we use, um, we use GPUs for that as much at this point of time. Uh, if if you do, there's a better solution. I, I can't remember how it's called, but it's a, it's a completely different device. Uh, we all love Chinese technology, dude. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> I guess all the technology we have is Chinese. Like, uh, I look, Taiwanese, <laughs> a lot of it, yeah. Because <laughs> most of the semiconductors in the world are 
I believe most of the semiconductors in the world are made in Taiwan, uh, which is now in the news lately. Uh, women invented programming. Let's go back to this because there's also Ada Lovelace, if I'm not mistaken. She was the first programmer in the world. No, no, isn't? Did, did she? Let's see. Let's see. Ada, I'm going to Google it because it's safe. I know that she is not uh, doing anything uh, problematic. <laughs> okay. So... Augusta Ada King, Countess of Lovelace, was an English mathematician and writer. Yeah, she may have been the first programmer. Uh, let's see. Let's Google. First programmer. Yeah, first computer programmer. There you go. There you go. The first computer programmer was a woman. There you go. So those of you who are claiming that this is a man's world and a man's industry, you are wrong. You are wrong. Also, many managers and many, you know, high level positions, high ranking positions are female in this industry. Um, so, yeah. 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 We, we rock. We, we rock this industry. We're not in a disadvantage in any shape or form. We are. I, I find that the ability to multitask is very, very strong with females. So <laughs> that's why we're so good at it. We're also very organized. A lot of us. Um, so. I guess I don't want to generalize these days. It's 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 forbidden. So <laughs> I don't want to offend any women who do not multitask. <laughs> okay, I think Flask is more simpler. So I would try that instead of Django. Yeah, I, I think it is. I think it is a bit uh, more simple. When I learn more front end, I will try full stack projects, something similar like I do in simple Pi GUI. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that web development is very 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 interesting i think that everybody needs to have a website doesn't matter what you do if you have you know if you have some kind of a trade or a skill even if you have a band or a restaurant you need a website uh yeah 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 let's see let's see i didn't see uh Udbub's new laptop yet i didn't see the specs yet still still waiting Udbub. <laughs> Okay, I had to buy the RAM from my uh, thread dipper from three different countries. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah, there, there was a huge part shortage. And uh, a lot of it was due to scavenging, I must admit. There was a lot of scavenging bots that were buying out parts and then selling them for like three times their price. Uh, that caused a lot of the shortage. But there are some like supply chain shortages as well. I think they're a bit uh, more problematic. What is the best for PDF manipulation? Pi PDF two, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think I have a tutorial on it. I I have my very first Kinter tutorial that I filmed one year ago. This guy create a GUI app with Kinter step by step. That's using, I believe. I'm gonna I'm gonna check out the description. Oh, I cannot see it. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here it is. I saw it. And we have a GitHub project. I'm just going to, I just try to verify that, uh, that I'm using the PyPDF2 module here because it's been so long since I filmed it. It was a year ago. Uh, yeah, PyPDF2. That's, that's right. That's my favorite. I don't know if it's the best, but uh, I really enjoy it. Um, is that a C Python library, though? Let's see. C Python? Or is it? Python only. Uh, is it pure Python? Yeah, so if there is a C Python library, uh, it will be probably better. I don't know if it exists. If it does, go for it. Because if it's pure Python, it will generally be slower than a library that uses, you know, C. Uh, C is faster. Uh, zip zip, uh, finally, weekend is coming and Maria is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am here. I'm glad to be back. It's been quite some time, you guys. I missed you. I will make some videos on to create PDF. I I already, I think I covered it in this Kinter tutorial that I, I just showed you. Um, actually, it's analyzing PDFs. I don't think it makes PDFs, but you do have an, you do have a function within this uh, library to convert a piece of data into a PDF file for sure. Um, okay. Connecting a Django to HTML is like, uh, GGRN. You guys, you forget that I'm an immigrant. If you use abbreviation, I'm not going to understand it. <laughs> 
even with ginger yeah i need i need uh, a description <laughs> a detailed description of things okay like more than online users i think there is no other live broadcast as popular as this i i think i think there is <laughs> i'm watching much more popular broadcasts like there's 50,000 viewers at once and you cannot even keep up with the comments right so th there's so much content out there it's just that you need to know how to find it and what is interesting to you i am yet to find a tech uh podcast that that is that i enjoy listening to um yeah i might kind of have to start one right I might invite uh, Badger and Josh to help me with that. Who knows? Well, Badger needs a camera for that. Or we need to mimic some kind of a, a Badger cartoon that will, <laughs> like a deep fake AI <laughs> uh, to be instead of him. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but I, I think that the technology podcast will be an interesting thing. There's a lot of things to, uh, a lot of things to cover, especially lately. There's a lot of developments. Hi, Python Simplify. Do you have a video with Python and XML documents? Thanks in advance. Uh, hmm, documents, I might. You know what? I don't want to say no, but I. it's been so long since I filmed it that I, I have no clue. No clue. Pri probably I do. I remember I did load some XML. I don't know if I'm Python Simplified or in my university. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Uh, Alexey, привет из России. Маша, ты классная. Спасибо, спасибо. Yeah, Maria, you're cool. Hi from Russia. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi. I'm translating this. Okay. Musk dropped from Twitter, so Twitter is no more. Yeah, I've I've noticed it. Like I, people are still following me. They're still adding me, but the amount of engagement dropped like crazy. Like I guess, I guess our kind of people, like programmers and folks that are really supportive towards uh, open source uh, projects were very excited about the possibility of Twitter returning to its open source self um, and it seems to not work not work uh, why bots <laughs> bots which we have created together on Twitter <laughs> probably not our bots but still I just did described uh, for my English trainer about range and zip functions. So now he understands a little of this uh, stream. Awesome. Awesome. Spasiba. Vasil. Vasil. Pavuk. So, ah, you must be from a Slavic country because uh, pa pa pauk in Russian is, is a spider. Pavuk must be Bulgarian or Romanian or Croatian, something along these lines. I didn't mean to disrespect. I don't mean private as in bad way. I meant I want to show you something we discussed before on another live stream. That's all. No, absolutely. I, I, I didn't think you were disrespectful. No, don't worry about it. Honestly, like um, it, it's a question that goes back like very often. I get it from a lot of people. And it was it, when I had a thousand subscribers, it was so easy to do. So easy. Like, I've done it like that. I was able to follow up with all the comments and everything. But now I'm finding new ways of communication with you guys. And I and I think that this live streaming thing is really, really good. Really enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, um, your best bet to reach me. So, so where I mostly check is whenever I'm posting a brand new tutorial, I go over all the comments in the, in the first few days and I comment on all of them also community posts if you see a community post i follow up on almost everything there um now on twitter i don't have many followers so if you tag me um, in a tweet or something there's a big chance i'll be able to view it if it's code uh, i'm not really checking my github that often so don't send me things on github <laughs> but yeah <laughs> your best bet to find me is always on youtube always like new videos i'm really I'm following up with the comments. It's very important. Uh, that's how I know what to film next. So uh, um, there's there's all kinds of ways to contact me. If you need to attach anything, if you need to, uh, like a picture or a screenshot, so definitely Twitter. Um, I, I don't go in there very often, but when I do, I check what I have. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, you're amazing, Maria. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you uh what else oh okay okay there's all kinds of political stuff in here uh yeah 
Oh, hello, Current Electrical. Hello, hello, my friend from Ontario. Thanks for joining in. Thank you. Yeah, so you guys, I'm, I'm sorry for not keeping up with the political stuff. I'm not going to cover it on my channel. This is not a political channel. Um, for a lot of people, it's political activism. For me, it's my family. It's where I come from. It's very close to home. I'm not going to comment on any of it. Sorry, guys. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's not going to be on this channel. I'm not going to tell you how I feel or how I think about this because people are very sensitive everywhere, okay? And it directly relates to my life, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm from that region. That's right. Um, is Linux obligatory for Python development in your opinion? No, but I find that it's very convenient. I do enjoy Linux. Uh, most of the tutorials I create, I create them on my Linux machine and then I kind of um, and then I load them. Honey, you can walk, uh, you can make some noise, don't worry. <laughs> my spouse is trying, <laughs> is walking very slowly, he's trying not to make any noise. <laughs> I feel bad for him, he needs to sit quietly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Linux is not obligatory. No, I know a lot of developers who are strictly using Windows. Strictly. They love the PowerShell. <clears throat> and, and Mr. Uh, Persistent Josh <laughs> and many other developers. It's actually a very popular system, despite uh, what people are saying. Millie, come here. Come here. So when my spouse leaves, the dog starts crying. So we're babysitting our friend's dog. She's here. I'm going to bring her to the stream. Give me five seconds. Give me five seconds. It's happening. Come on, Millie. Say hi. No. Come on, Millie. Sorry, guys. She's running away. She's trying to play with me. It's not happening. I'm not bringing her. <laughs> she ran away from me. Come on, Millie. Come on. She doesn't listen to me. That's the thing. When you're babysitting a dog that you're not the owner of, you're nobody. <laughs> you're just the, the food provider, the, the trip uh, taker, <laughs> all these sort of stuff. Okay. When I was practicing pandas, I created a script that saves all pictures in Excel file with RGB sheet and another sheet and another script to extract that. Nice. But, hmm, saving pictures in Excel file, that's, that's interesting. I haven't seen it before. I think I, think I remember you writing this to me, uh, Sinisa. I think I remember. I have a camera. I just never turn it on. <gasps> Badger has a camera. What? What? Well, my, my camera is usually like on my laptop. It is blocked with, uh, <laughs> with some masking tape so nobody can see it. Mili, hi. Come say hi. Come say hi, you gorgeous little dog. Look at Mili. Hi. Hi. What do you think? Ah, she's not a very typical Pomeranian, I must admit. I see a lot of Pomeranians and they're very, very small uh, compared to Millie and they have a completely different face. So I'm going to have to check with my friends exactly the kind of, uh, of uh, lovely puppy I'm dealing with here. Yeah. Yes, you, you, you. Don't lick me. Please don't lick me. Please don't lick me. <laughs> it's hot enough here without, uh, without being licked. <laughs> okay. I bought a new laptop at November, a gigabyte Aero, i9, 4K, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Nothing changed because my small kid still wants to jump on it. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem with uh, buying technology. You need to share it. And I have a super chat. Yay for women in tech. <gasps> Thank you so much, David. Yeah, exactly. Yay for women in tech. They're people present us as though we are victims but no we are rocking it you guys you know we, it's much easier to find uh, i find that it's a bit easier to be it, it makes you special when you apply for the same job that 100 other guys applied and you're the only female who applied there's a big chance that the company will look at your resume first because they want diversity okay so in our days holy smokes you guys it's a huge advantage so i don't know why not all the ladies are jumping on this opportunity. I, I jumped on it, you know. I started learning computer science recently. So, yep. Well, recently, about two and a half years ago. But uh, it's kind of recent. <laughs> Relatively, yeah. 
Oh, wow. There, there's some cryptographic code here. Okay. I'm going to have to do this after the stream. I'm going to have to figure it out. But yeah, thank you so much, Dev David. Thank you so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you're studying master in information technology. No, I am working on my bachelor in uh, computer science, uh, bachelor of science in computer science and artificial intelligence and machine learning specialty specialization. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. I'm almost done, actually. I don't have that many um, modules. Um, I'm just trying to trying to uh, do as little as I can at this point of time in terms of studying. I used to like aim for 100. Now I am aiming for 70. Okay, and and hopefully I'll get 100 as a result because I get very stressed before tests. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a perfectionist. I like it when it's perfect. If it's something is not perfect, I get very upset. Um, dog, human, uh, please no. <laughs> no, she's actually, she's still on my, on my feet. She likes attention. Um, it's, it's hard because her owners, they, they left her, uh, here, her parents, I would call them, they left her here. And ever since she's afraid when everybody leaves the door, she starts being so afraid. Oh, you're going to leave me now. You're going to do this again. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you tricked her into cussing. Yeah, yeah. I uh, read the word uh, sheet in a very <laughs> problematic pronunciation. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Immigrant, immigrant, what can you do? What can you do? Nice dress, Em. Thank you. Thank you. I'm usually wearing t shirts on the channel. I try to avoid um, shoulders, but <laughs> it's too hot. It is too hot, you guys. Um, what is best for developers? Windows, Mac, or Linux? I enjoy Linux a lot when it comes to creating software and programs. And, you know, generally, I, I like the fact that you, you're you working with your terminal so much on uh, Linux. Um, so, in, and usually before I make tutorials, I test them on Linux as well. I, I have a Mac. I don't like using it at all, but a lot of people are really enjoying it. Uh, my uncle is a huge fan. He's, he's a He's an actual professional senior developer. He's uh, creating all kinds of apps uh, for Wayfair, um, e-commerce website. Okay, okay, Mili jumped, Mili jumped. <laughs> nothing broke, nothing, nothing went on. Everything's still good. It's just not on my feet anymore. But yeah, it's all a matter of personal preference. Use what you have, you know, buying Mac, is not uh, very different in price than buying the, the rogues I furious I'm dreaming of, you know. Uh, if you have some spare cash, Mac is great. If you have a regular 500 bucks computer, there's really no difference. You know, th there is a difference if you're doing parallel computing, artificial intelligence, or, and things like that. But if you create software, it should work on a 500 bucks computer just as well as it works on a very fancy computer okay so when you create software when you're programming you don't need to have the, the best and newest machine you need to have what you have <laughs> it works uh, you know pydroid you know sinisa was was uh, recommending it pydroid you can make applications on your phone you know you can run python on your phone so yeah yeah, yeah. And ooh, we have a bunch of Mac users here. Wow. Nice. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, it gives me an idea for a poll. I'm going to check which operating system y'all have um, in the next community poll. Uh, acknowledging more women in tech. Yeah. Yeah. We, the, there's a bunch of us. You'd be surprised. You'd be very surprised. Can you make a video about Python and Ansible uh, focused in automation ansible i haven't heard of it i haven't heard of it if i see more requests sure it's all about how many requests i see using ios and it's the best for me okay awesome awesome yeah my uh, my spouse is also a huge fan of uh, ios amazing spider-man amazing maria big power comes big responsibility yeah <laughs> i agree with Bob. It's like she doesn't know I use a PS. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. This is interesting. Uh, okay. What's going on? There was a political discussion that I missed. Ah! 
Wow, okay, but you're right, current electrical, it's Python simplified, not Python political, for sure. I have, this doesn't mean that I don't have opinions or things to say, it's just not the platform to do so, and not the best time <laughs> in the history of the world to speak your mind. Tobs, hello Tobs, thank you for joining us, thank you, can we fax you? Of course, it's not going to reach me, but you can. <laughs> Nobody's using fax. Nobody. Well, actually, in Canada, you send prescriptions to your doctors and your like between your doctors and your pharmacy through fax, which is odd. Why would anybody do that? <laughs> it's so weird. But yeah, whatever. Um, I have created a chatbot using your video knowledge. Awesome. Awesome. That's so cool. That's so cool. Good job. Good job yeah yeah let's see what else what else do we have here yeah okay down to the very last comments we are about to wrap up this stream i'm gonna comment i'm gonna answer on a few more comments and then i'm gonna have to go because my camera is about to uh is about to run out of uh or to heat up or to run out of battery i'm not sure what's its problem so yeah, if I disappear from the screen, you can still hear my voice. I'll still say bye, but we're nearing the end of the stream. Just letting you guys know. Why don't you have any Python framework for mobile development, iOS, Android yet? Um, PyDroid, Py PyDroid, right? You can use it. Um, ah, ah, sorry, I didn't get you. I didn't get your answer. You can use Kiwi uh, and KiwiMD. You can convert them to an Android application. Actually, I have a really nice tutorial on it. You can check it out on my channel. Let me pull it out. Let me pull it out. Okay. Where is it? There you go. Convert Python to Android with Windows. Okay. There you go. Uh, it's easier if you have Linux, but you can do this with Windows. Here is a proof of it. Okay. Kiwi and KiwiMD uh, can be converted to Android applications. However, if you're professionally trying to build Android applications, Java and Kotlin are probably better approaches. You'll need the developer, uh, the Android developer uh, toolkit, toolkit, something, something along these lines. Uh, that's you don't use Python for Android development at this point of time. Maybe we will later on, but uh, this is just more for personal projects at this point of time. English National Health Services is the world's largest user of fax machine and also the world's largest exchange uh, deployment. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So not only in Canada. Huh. Okay, so fax is still a thing, eh? <laughs> we just don't use it privately. You know, it, it, I used to use it a lot. I was working in a, it was a construction estimator in a, a company named Rona. It's it's a, it, it's basically, the, it gives you like const, construction tools. Like it, I was working in the contractor office. So contractors would come, I would give them estimations on their projects. They would give me blueprints. I'd say, okay, you need this and this amount of lumber. You need this and this amount of uh, like, um, hardware and things of that sort. Uh, so there we use a lot of faxes, but that was in 2015. It was a very long time ago. Things have changed. And oh, we have another super chat. Thank you so much. Akshay, Akshay, thank you so much. Uh, do you know Python is mostly in the bottom half of ranking when it comes to energy consumption? Nice, nice. So you see, we may be slower, but we're great with resources, right? Not speed resources, but maybe space resources. And we're maybe we're saving the hardware, you know? Maybe we're sparing it from a dark future. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 perhaps also React Native, but trying Kiwi would be interesting. I love Kiwi. It's, it's one of my favorites. Have you experienced any library for quantum computations? No, no. Can we can we actually do quantum computations? That would be insane. Python has the advantage of being very flexible with collections and precision. Wow. I didn't know we have access to, to uh, quantum computing power. I thought that only like huge like companies like Microsoft and Amazon, they're working on their... Uh, this is brand new to me. Thanks for letting me know. I'll check it out. Uh, we 
need to do construction app in Python estimating from a database. It's actually, it can be done with, uh, can be done. There, there could be apps doing that already. You know, I, I would assume they figured it out. Again, it was 2015. It was almost uh, 10 years ago. It was, I was just starting. Um, I was still a, uh, I was still working. No, actually, I, got, I just got my permanent residency back back then. It was still in Alberta. Um, I was, uh, yeah, it, just, it was brand new to Canada back then, uh, this time that I was talking about. But yeah, ever since, ever since I didn't have much experience with construction, um, I went to a completely different field. I've been doing graphic design for a very, very long time. Um, Fast API with Django, your opinion? I haven't tried Fast API, so I am not sure. I am not sure. Sorry, guys. You keep asking me all kinds of interesting things that I, I, I'm yet to test. You forget I'm a student, okay? <laughs> I'm a student still learning as I go, and I learn a lot from you. So thank you so much for all your comments and chats. Are your mic RGB and your background color related? See, th that's, that's what really upsets me, because that's supposed to be synchronized with my Aura desktop thing. But yeah, it, it's not being synchronized for some reason. I'm going to have to look into it. But yeah, that, that's supposed to have the exact same color. So when it's pink behind me, it's supposed to be pink on the microphone. Same goes for all my computer hardware uh, inside the computer, as well as the, the keyboard and mouse. So it's all supposed to be synced. It is not. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, my pre preferred operating system is FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I've seen this one. Let's create our own programming language. I, You know what? I'm just going to keep using Python. You, we could, but there has to be a reason. There has to be a purpose for all this hard work, right? Uh, not a bad idea. <laughs> You know what? Create a language. Let me know. Let me know. For sure. I, I would like to have a Maria function in it, please. <laughs> That's my only request. <laughs> uh, we need to build a cancer cell position prediction app. Hmm. I think there's too many variables for, for something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not really... I, I don't have much background with biology, but... Uh, I think we already have programs, you know, that deal with splicer. So you can find, uh, collect like a piece of genome that you don't like, like a piece of, uh, a sorry, a sequence within your DNA that you want to chop off and replace it with another sequence. We have the technology to do so. Uh, if I'm ever doing a master degree, that's what I'll be studying. Um, they have a really nice program in UBC, uh, University of British Columbia. Yeah, check it out. Uh, greetings from Argentina, Argentina. Hello, hello. Learning Python at 44 years old. You're a great teacher. I love you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, cheers, cheers. Uh, okay, okay. What else? Okay, I've read this comment. What is the best for MS Office, Excel, PowerPoint, World, Outlook, Automation, in your opinion? Ah. Uh, I don't really use Office, you know, since since Google has alternatives that are completely free, that's what I use. I do have the full Office package on my Alienware, but I rarely access this Alienware. It's mostly like a living room television, like living room replacement to a smart TV, even though our TV is already smart, but whatever. I rarely use the Alienware. I wish I used it more. Uh, it's a good computer. I just, I know it's hard to use it when you have this custom rogue build. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, copy, copyright, I romance world. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What do you mean? Besides Python, what uh, languages you prefer? I already answered it in the beginning of the screen. I uh, stream. I know CSS, HTML, C++, JavaScript. This is the collection. That's QL too, but I guess um, my, my preferred language is always Python. Obviously, I'm very biased, you guys. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you something else. It's always, always Python. Always Python. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, oh, I have people. I, Ivan from Crimea, Ukraine. I am from uh, Crimea, Ukraine, too. Nice, nice. I was born there, and then uh, we immigrated to the Middle East. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Hi, good to see you guys. Good to see you. 
um, do you build your own PC? Because I know doing ML, you need a really good CPU. No, no, for machine learning, you, you, it's, you don't really need a good CPU. You need a good GPU in most cases, um, actually for deep learning. Um, a good CPU is, is great, but a good algorithm is better. <laughs> you know? that's, that, that's the usual saying. So if you can improve something within your code, it's better than improving your hardware very often. Now, you, you know what? These days you can access GPU services for free through Google. You, you can use Google Colab, which is the Google equivalent of, um, of Jupyter Notebook. They do offer you free GPU, and I do have a few videos on that on my channel. Uh, in particular, in those uh, training neural networks tutorials, I'm showing you exactly how to apply uh, the CUDA using uh, GPU powers in those uh, two tutorials. Uh, and this is in particular with Google Colab. Um, so yeah, if you don't mind Google <laughs> looking at your code, definitely check it out. You don't need to have a good computer. You can use uh, cloud-based uh, programs you don't have to use your own computer. Very often in my tutorials, I'm using a cloud service, which is called Wayscript. The code doesn't run on my computer. It runs on their servers. So um, if you don't have a nice computer at home, if you have a very old computer that doesn't run very well, there's no need to torture it. Just go to a cloud service and uh, yeah, run it there. Cool. Um, what else? What else do we have here? OK. Arshad, could you suggest some tips on how to start freelancing with Python skills? Hmm. Well, it is, once you have a YouTube channel and uh, people are hearing, finding out all about you, you're getting freelance offers like immediately. You're getting it. It, it kind of comes with the... <laughs> With, with the channel itself is when people are getting exposed to you, they see how you code, they enjoy your personality, they want to work with you, they make you these offers. So that's that's how I know. Uh, that, that's what I know how to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can start freelancing through different, um, there, there's, a, there's a site called Upskill and there's all kinds of sites like that. But to tell you that I think you can make lots of money with those sites, you need to, you need to be... I couldn't make any money with them. I've, I've posted some projects. I've done some, you know, I tried to do some graphic design work. I was about to open like a graphic design business called Watermelon Design. I had a website. I had everything. Um, and I kind of, I switched switched to Python Simplified instead. But I, I couldn't figure it out. If you can figure it out, it's great. But uh, I feel like before before you're getting, you know, before you start making money with those platforms, you need to do a lot of free projects, which is not something that people have time for. Uh, but yeah, freelancing is is very interesting. But uh, I don't know if if Python is the only thing you need to learn with this. I know that people are paying good money for web, web scrapers. Uh, if you can figure out how to automate a system, um, that, that, that's probably worth a lot of money, you know, especially in the field of marketing. Um, but yeah, you know what? I'm going to have a few upcoming streams asking actual professional freelancers how they do their stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that for sure. Uh, just I'm not the best person to ask. I don't have a lot of experience with that. Uh, okay. 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 I think I'm caught up. I'm almost caught up with the comments. Let's see what else you guys have commented here. Ah, okay. We have another super chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can we see a tutorial on proxy based increasing live streams views bought using Python Selenium? It's problematic. I'll tell you why. If... <laughs> If YouTube finds out you're doing this, you're in big, big, big trouble. You're not supposed to use um, automation on YouTube. Now, I have a lot to lose on YouTube. I don't have much to lose on Twitter. <laughs> I don't have much to lose on other uh, platforms. So I'm automating a lot of platforms, but not YouTube. This is my primary source of income. Without it, I'm completely broke. It's not like I'm swimming in cash right now, but <laughs> I, uh, I will not be able to survive it if, uh, if uh, oh, we have some bots joining. I, 
I think that every time we write the word bot, there's a bot that goes into the stream and starts bugging us. Is, is, can we check it? Can somebody else write bot? Let's see. <laughs> I, th I remove this spam bot. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let's see. We, we wrote bot, bot a couple of more times. So let's, let's see. <laughs> let's see if it pops again. Uh, don't do that. You will get your channel banned. I wouldn't even say banned. You would get shadow banned, which is way worse. If you're banned, at least you know that, hey, there's no more, you know, YouTube is no longer your body, you know, you, you know it. But when you're shadow banned, you think that everything is business as usual, but <laughs> it's not. Nobody get exposed to your channel. So, yeah, I wouldn't risk it specifically with YouTube. It's it, it, when you compare it to platforms like TikTok and Twitter and Instagram, those platforms, you cannot really make any passive income on them. You know, you make it per, per post if it's sponsored by people, but people are not really watching ads that they can find on your profile. So you're not making any money with those platforms. Definitely use bots on them for sure. But if you have a YouTube channel and you and every video you upload, has certain commercials and it gives you a stream of income. Don't risk it. Don't. It's not worth it. It's it's really not. Uh, plus, I don't know if it tricks the algorithm because if your viewers are all proxies, they don't really engage with the stream. They don't comment. They don't like anything. They don't share it. They. It's. It's not about how many people are viewing your stuff. It's about the engagement you get. Is there a conversation? Do people find it useful? Do they come back to this video to see it again? Uh, it's not just the only stats of, of views, okay? That's, that's just one of those things. I don't recommend doing this at all. But if you want to know how to do this with other platforms, I have a whole playlist just dedicated for that. Let me pull it out. Yeah, web scraping and automation of all kinds of platforms, um, LinkedIn, Twitter. What I have? What else do I have here? Um, Instagram, Facebook. Just name it, you guys. Yeah, I've I've scraped and bought it all of them, all of them. It was fun. I loved it. <laughs> My Twitter bot is still alive. Still alive. There you go. Okay. Uh, do you suggest any Python certification? Does it really work? Uh, Paolo, I think it's a fraud. <laughs> Everybody who wants to certify you with Python, unless it's an official body like Google or Facebook or whatever company that you want to work for uh, eventually, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. I paid 600 bucks for a nano degree, which is considered a an acceptable certification in the workforce. It is not. It's a lie. OK, if you'd like to find out more about it, uh, Paulo, check out my Do You Need a Tutor live stream that I posted not too long ago. I'm sharing all kinds of free resources and I tell you exactly how I feel about those uh, online certification tricks. <laughs> it, it is tricks. It is tricks. Um, OK. I would like that your husband says hi on the channel. Well, he left. I bet you he's at the gym or something at the gym. Gym. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't like cameras. He's not a big fan. Uh, even he looks great. I don't know why he doesn't like cameras, but uh, yeah. He. Oh, we have some f French here. Well, merci pour tes cours. Ah, thank you for your courses. I don't know French, but I understand that. Vraiment uh, avec du bon exemple. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Okay. Thank you for your teaching. Nice support and examples. Okay. Here's a translation. I should have just read it. I just, I wanted to float my, uh, my, uh, my French accent. I, I don't have one, but <laughs> I'm trying. Bonjour. Bonjour. Okay. Okay. Uh, cheers for sharing such great knowledge. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Tanai. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy you enjoy it. Uh, for Excel Automation, XI Wings, Katrina is saving the day once again. Once again. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Are you married? I am engaged. I was supposed to get married in 2019, but uh, life had other plans. The world had other plans for me. But yeah, I'm still engaged. I feel like I'm married for the past 10 years. You know, I wasn't expecting to get like an official 
a proposal for Mario because we were both like, well, we're, we're kind of married already. It doesn't really matter if we have like if we signed a document or not. But yeah, but he surprised me. I, I got back from a trip in France. I was uh, meeting my family. Bonjour, bonjour. Yeah. <laughs> I had a nice uh, trip in Normandy and uh, in Paris. Um, and once I got back, Mario picked me up from the airport straight uh, to a nice marina here in uh, Port Moody, and he proposed, which was very exciting because I didn't, I didn't think it's gonna happen. I didn't expect it, so it was nice. So yeah, I am engaged. I am engaged. Uh, greetings from ah, I, I, I read this comment. Perfect. So we are nearing the end of this stream, folks. I'm gonna. I always say it's only a few comments and I end up speaking for another half an hour, but yeah, let's, let's cover some more <laughs> CUDA production. You will make some more videos about PyScript. I will. I'm just waiting for their documentation. I, I feel uncomfortable uh, making tutorials before I have a documentation. I'm a very documentation oriented kind of a person. I love it. That's how I learn. Uh, we're having a Python uh, wet, Wedding, I bet you, not weeding. <laughs> Soon, I'd like to party there in Vancouver. Yeah, for sure, join us, JA. Vancouver is awesome for partying. There's, a, yeah, I bet you, wedding, right? Not weeding. <laughs> Even though there's a lot of it going on in Vancouver, guys, there's a lot of it in every corner. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, join, come, come visit, we'll come see you. You know, we have amazing lakes here. We have amazing things to do in Vancouver. Um, Everything. It's all about nature. It's all all about nature. Uh, yeah, that's right. Mario and Maria. That's it. M and M. <laughs> Mario, Maria, and Neo. <laughs> and now Millie also joined us uh, temporarily. <laughs> chocolate or the wrapper, the chocolate. Yeah, actually, both of them are equally uh, <laughs> equally weird at this point of time. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll go for the chocolate. I like food. <laughs> okay. Maria, do you know German? I pretend. I, I'm good at pretending I know German. We get his dear. <laughs> Come, Mette Mia. Come auf mein Schloss. I, I know, like, well, it's like, Rammstein German. That's that's the German I know. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to move there. That's kind of my dream. Well, Vancouver is mm, super expensive. Like, I, I don't know. It's It was my dream before. I, actually, I, I lived in Kelowna, which is a very, very nice uh, city. It's a very, very nice touristic place with lots of uh, wineries and a big Okanagan lake. It was amazing. It's about five hours a drive away from uh, Vancouver. And we went to visit a friend in Vancouver. Once we've seen the city, we were like, okay, we're, we're not coming back to Kelowna, only to take our stuff. And <laughs> we're more Vancouver kind of people. But things are changing uh, with time. Um, things are getting a bit more rough, but I guess it's everywhere. I guess it's, it's a global kind of a thing. So I don't know. I don't know. Vancouver used to be better. We used to be much, much better. Yeah. A true programmer spends hours on Google and Stack Overflow, not documentation. I, I, I start from documentation. Well, let's, let's be honest. I start, but when it comes, there comes a time where, you know, I need to solve some stuff. I get some errors. Obviously Stack Overflow is, is part of it. I actually find that GitHub very often gives me the best solution. There's all kinds of uh, issues open in libraries and they, they really, I find them very, very helpful. J.A. knows the same German as you. Well, <laughs> that's right, Rammstein, yeah, because we have a very similar taste in music, eh? <laughs> Maria, ma'am, chocolate or love? <laughs> Which you choose, love, what do you mean? Love is the best, there's nothing better. Um, <laughs> nothing better, you guys. Um, let's see, let's see, do I have anything else? Uh, do I have anything else? Okay, I've been to open classrooms for a degree. It's way more worth than a certificate. Yeah, yeah. Degree, well, certificate is, is nice if it's like an associate <laughs> degree or like a certificate that is given to you from like a recognized, um, recognized facility like a BCIT, you know, like uh, British Columbia, Informational Technology Institute, Institute of Technology, sorry, uh, places like that. This could be a technical certificate. It doesn't have to be a full-blown degree, you know, a computer science thing. But 
when you when you pay an online platform such as Udemy or Udacity or Coursera for something along these lines, I don't think anybody will recognize it. I don't think so. If it's a specialty course by Facebook, if it's a specialty course by Google, by whatever, uh, Amazon, whatever, sure, it may give you some some help with finding a job. But yeah, that, that actually, that, that's what I'm hoping to cover in the next few live streams. Um, I'm going to, I want to really focus on the finding a job uh, kind of a topic. Like, are you ready to apply for jobs? Like, do you actually need a computer science degree? And I want to ask people who have lots of experience um, on the topic, not myself. <laughs> I'm a student. <laughs> I keep reminding you guys. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite energy drink for development? Yeah. Coffee, coffee. See, Udbub knows me way too well, way too well. <laughs> for sure sure uh thanks for the reply it would be nice uh, to see a tutorial with pi game you're very good you know i have a tutorial with pi game right i don't think you know let, let me show you let me show you it is it, it's one of my recent ones actually and i bet you my head is blocking it I bet, where is my pi game tutorial if we're already here Ha! Huh. I, I, I bet you I can see it. Aha! I changed the thumbnail, that's why. Okay, I'm now holding the game in my hand. It used to be just me standing there uh, with a Tom and Jerry t-shirt. But yeah, I have a Pygame tutorial. I'm going to expand it um, later on to an object-oriented programming exercise. But for now, this is a really good tutorial. It will get you up to speed. Uh, it teaches you all you need to create a basic application. Yeah. Cool. What else? Opa. Evgeny, у тебя такое классное про изношение на английском. Можно понять любые слова. Okay, so Evgeny is complimenting me on my English pronunciation in those times that I don't mess up. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying very hard. I'm trying very hard. Um, especially since I'm an immigrant, I need to kind of speak in a way that everybody can understand me. So I'm, I'm taking my time with syllables and <laughs> so speaking. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Ah, big love from Egypt. Ahalan wa sahalan ali. Kif halak. Kif halak. What? Uh, that conveniently posted in YouTube. Ooh, there's a first comment. Oh, geez. Where if only there was a dating website out there? <laughs> Okay, so apparently the dating bot attacked again. Oh, those dating bots that uh, conveniently posted in YouTube streams. Exactly. Who believes that bot? Did anybody click on it ever? What's the purpose of having it? I, I just, I, I think I, I kissed I kiss my microphone. <laughs> Not on purpose. I don't know what happened there. Oh, what else? Okay, yeah, I, I kind of lost the rest of the comments. So I'm just going to go. Uh, down here. Uh, it's hard being a Python programmer. I can't wait for 2032 when there is Pi++. Plus plus. <laughs> Pi++, plus plus, I'd love to see that. It, it sounds like a oxymoron, like a screaming silence. <laughs> Things that are usually impossible. <laughs> uh, let's see. When you arrived in Canada, uh, 2012, in fact, December 28, 2012, I came here as a tourist. I didn't think I'm going to stay. I ended up meeting Mario. And uh, so many years later, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's very, it's even more funny because Mario and I, we lived about an hour away from each other back home. <laughs> and we met in the other side of the world in Edmonton, Alberta. So that, that's interesting how destiny works, right? It's very, very interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, I don't, okay. I don't know so much about Python, but I'm improving my English. Fair enough. That's right, Em. Whatever I can help with, take take from me. I'm trying to, to make my pronunciations very clear. Um, yeah, because when I'm watching teachers in my university, and it's an online university, it's, it's a distant learning degree that I'm doing. The teachers, the way they pronounce words, it makes so much difference. So in, in a teacher that natively speaks, speaks, speaks English, 
you know, Harry Potter, you know, this type of clean English with a UK accent, it's, it's much clearer uh, than, you know, than uh, folks from other countries uh, trying to... <laughs> trying trying to convey the same message but uh you can barely understand the words they're saying so it, it is very important i find uh this pronunciation thing because you, you get easily discouraged if you cannot understand something um what else i always use stack overflow just that you find answers from five years ago and stuff <laughs> till some one recommended github i'll try it um yeah there's there's some recent stuff on github it's you're not always gonna find the best solution there but i i don't know recently recently i found lots of solutions there so it maybe it's changing okay people are tired to type only bots are never tired that's right actually bots were created by people so uh, 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 uh. um how to stay motivated while doing programming, join a community. You're actually a part of our community. So make connections, meet some friends, make some networking, join our Discord server, contact people from your trade, you know, share your code with them, ask some, for some feedback. Um, it's a two-way street, right? Um, very often, because when you begin your journey, you're often looking for a mentor or somebody to guide you and point you out. But it doesn't have to be a single person. This could be a community effort, right? So if you post your code on GitHub and you go to Stack Overflow and you're looking for some answers, it, there, there's a lot of engagement going on. So as long as you, you keep yourself engaged and you keep yourself in the networking kind of world, maybe meet some people on LinkedIn, maybe try to meet. We have a really nice Discord server. You can find the link in the description. You know, there's lots of, other than myself, there are so, so many developers there. Some of them are extremely experienced. For example, Badger, who you can find in the comments. He has lots of experience. He's, he's really, really smart. You just gather information from him like a sponge. You know, this will really help you. Um, and yeah, don't rely on a single person. Make sure you collect feedback for from as many people as you can, and this will keep you motivated, especially if they give you good feedback. But actually, I find that what motivates me more is negative feedback. When I'm getting some really not nice comments, you know, and I'm, you know, and I at first I think, oh, uh, I don't want to comment on it, I don't want to reply, you know, and I end up implementing the suggestions that I didn't like. I do get a lot of. Uh, much more positive feedback after. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe criticism is what makes you more motivated, is what, what gives you the drive to fight. Um, yeah. Okay. Have you uh, played around with any code competition transformers like Codex? No, I, I don't have time for this. <laughs> I don't have time for anything. I sh actually, I'm taking a bit of a relaxation break because... I don't know, you guys didn't notice, but I've been really torturing myself to get tutorials out. I've been uh, not sleeping entire nights uh, for quite some time. And in the last month or so, month or two, I actually I'm toning things down, I'm relaxing. I don't think it's healthy to, you know, edit a video <laughs> throughout the night and then be awake for the premiere in the morning, you know, drinking five glasses of coffee, coffee to keep your eyes open and then unable to fall asleep throughout the day so it, it wasn't very healthy and uh i needed a bit of a break so yeah that's uh that's my break time <laughs> c plus plus is great language but it requires a lot of time for knowing and it to become proficient yeah yeah it's much more difficult to it's more time consuming to learn than python uh, yeah do you see any major advantages of dynamically typed languages like python over static type languages like java i don't know any java okay but I know that Java has a huge advantage in terms of mobile Android development. All languages have, have uh, advantages and disadvantages. It's, it's all about finding the right language for what you are trying to do. So it all depends on, on what you're trying to achieve. Um, yeah, I'll always defend Python. <laughs> yeah. Maria, what is Python or something else? It will always be Python. And, and I'll always admit that this is bias. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, code uh, completion, completion. Yeah. Well, the, the only code completion I use is usually comes from the IDE. So whatever WayScript has, whatever Jupyter 
Jupiter notebook does it have? No, I don't think it has any. I tried tab nine for a bit, but it was also like, uh, it, it was also suggesting me comments, which was a bit too much if you ask me, like I can comment for myself, but um, yeah, tab nine, I tried it. They actually sponsored a video on this channel. Um, it's pretty much it. I've, I've tried the, whatever is built in into Visual Studio Code. Uh, sorry, Visual Studio. Yeah, I didn't download anything especially for that. Um, which software do you use for editing your videos? Adobe Premiere. I'm going to open it up. Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm actually having some issues with Adobe lately. They're not, uh, they're not giving me a student discount, even though the entire world knows I'm a student. Everybody's aware of it. I provide in them official documentation from my university, and yet uh, they still don't accept that I'm a student, which is weird. Okay, so let's uh, actually let me pull out the LinkedIn teaser of uh, of my recent dictionary comprehension tutorial, which includes the first few minutes of this recent video. Okay, I'm missing some fonts. No worries. No worries. There you go. So this is how, this is how each and every one of my tutorials begins. Actually, let me pull it out a bit further. Let me do it that way. Okay, so you can see it. Let's enlarge it, this timeline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind. It's large enough. So this is basically your, your uh, premiere program. You can find all kinds of different... Uh, Sorry, guys, I guess because it's streaming now, it's not really, huh, it uses up a lot of my uh, my processing power so it doesn't render the images, but yeah. So, for example, this this type of function, this, this type of uh, scenes, if I am removing those two layers, you can find all kinds of layers underneath it. So those two layers include the actual video where I am removing the green screen behind me. Then we have some layers that go above it. What did I, okay, there's nothing there. Uh, that go below it, okay, which is the tutorial plan. So I work with layers, right? See how it all builds up to a one nice graphic. Okay, so if you're if you're into video editing, it will take you some time to be good at it. Uh, it took me a lot of time to figure it out, uh, but you will eventually. It's uh, like Photoshop, but for videos, it's very interesting. Um, and yeah, and there's all kinds of graphics that you can get in addition. I think I covered it in uh, one of my recent tutorials, but it's a very convenient uh, program to work with, especially if you're using Adobe Illustrator. If you're combining it with it, it's uh, really it's really, really handy, really handy. But if I'm not getting my student discount, guess what? I'm not going to use Adobe anymore. I'm going to find some alternatives. Um, and yeah, that's it. I want to open a YouTube channel named Complicated Python. <laughs> Good, do it, do it. <laughs> I allow you, feel free. I'll, I'll even advertise you. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, greetings from Lithuania. Hello, hello, hello. What is your work exactly? I am a student and I am a YouTuber. Mm, yeah, yeah. After more than 20 years, I don't see any advantages in dynamic language. Even if I love Python, st 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 statically typed languages have a lot of a pro, in my honest opinion. Mm, okay, thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Um, yeah, I, I, I told you which languages I'm proficient with. I don't think I have enough knowledge to, to, to compare between uh, static and dynamic ones at this point of time. I'm more of a dynamic kind of person. Uh, can I buy a script for web scraping? Is it legal? For example, script to resolve CAPTCHA and things like that. So it's, it's interesting because CAPTCHA is supposed to check whether you're human or not. I am not aware of any laws, at least in Canada, that pre prevent you from... I've seen computers solve CAPTCHAs with zero problems. If you want to solve CAPTCHAs, just use Selenium. They have all the tools uh, to, to help you with that. I'm yet to find a CAPTCHA that is not uh, solvable. Because uh, if you can do this with your hands, if you can do this with your keyboard and mouse, there's no reason why you can't do this with Selenium, okay? So uh, web scraping, uh, it's not about the fact that it's legal or not. So when it comes to legal things, it's copyrights. So if you're using uh, some content that somebody else owns, 
um, it's not physical content that you can touch. It's like it's it's something that is. Uh, oh, I forgot the official name of it. The, let's call it theoretical content. It's not the it's not the actual name, but um, when you're using content that is licensed, like th that you don't have a license to use, that's where legal issues are coming. But if you are violating the terms and conditions of a program, of a software, or of a uh, uh, platform, it's not about legality or illegality. They don't write laws. They're not a legislative assembly. They have no authority over you. And if they would start suing their, their users, like if Facebook would start suing you for web scraping, guess who will never use Facebook again, right? They, they cannot do this. So in the end of the day, it's about violating the terms and conditions of platforms because not a lot of platforms allow you web scraping. Almost no platform allows you to do web scraping, I guess, Discord allows you to write bots, like it's fine with bots, it's all good. But uh, those, the other platforms, if you are caught, only if you are caught, you might get banned. You might uh, lose access to your account for a week or it might be deleted. That's why if we're web scraping, we're always using dummy accounts or bots, also known as bots. But yeah, I, <laughs> I wanted to post a tutorial solving a CAPTCHA, but this is, this is actually a good question. This is a good question in terms of legality of CAPTCHAs because some sources are saying that you can get sued for that. I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but I know that it's doable and a lot of people are bypassing it with no problem. Selenium, folks. Selenium, yeah. Uh, in particular, pressing with your mouse for a given amount of time. That solves some of the CAPTCHAs. Another option is to train a neural network on a Kaggle database that already exists. It's a bunch of... Uh, it's a bunch of um, distorted text to train you how to solve other CAPTCHAs. It, you can do everything. You can. There's there's nowhere that you cannot break into. It's just a matter of time and patience. Uh, I wish Siam was here to comment on that. <laughs> He'd be excited about this conversation. Okay, I've been here. Okay, folks, I am almost done. I am um, almost. I'm almost out. It's almost three hours and my camera is about to die, okay? So we have a few suggestions of using PowerShell, Windows 10. Um, is there a command line based text editor for Windows 10? I wanna feel like Mr. Robot when I'm coding. We'll just get a virtual machine of Kali Linux and then that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what he's using, I believe. I believe it's Kali Linux, I am not sure. I'll need to rewatch it, but um, yeah, you, you can use the you can use PowerShell. You can use the regular command prompt. You just you just type cmd, right? Uh, cmd. Come on, sorry guys. Cmd. You open it, run it as an administrator. And there you go. You have your command prompt here. But uh, I know a lot of people are using PowerShell instead. Yeah. You, do, you, you, you can access command prompt just as easily with Windows. Uh, you cannot do the things you can do with uh, Kali Linux with it. <laughs> well, well, you probably can't, sorry, I'm, I apologize. Don't prove me wrong. <laughs> Don't prove me wrong, please. <laughs> okay, probably easier for a computer to solve CAPTCHAs than humans to solve them, <laughs> right? I agree, it's like it, it, it presents you with a bunch of pictures. Uh, select the pictures with sidewalks. And there's one picture where it looks like a sidewalk, but it's not exactly, it's hard to tell. And you just sit there and you ponder and yeah, I agree. <laughs> Especially those with the letters, that, those are really annoying. Do you have any tutorials for that? Uh, video editing. Uh, see, it's, it's challenging to film one. I'm going to I'm going to try to do so though because you need like, I film in 4K like all my videos are are very very large files so it it takes a toll from my computer to render them even though it's a beast of a computer it's not very easy to combine it with recording um I might just I might just downgrade it to uh to full HD or something I'll think about it for sure what I can do is I can show you how I'm making thumbnails and things of that sort maybe designing logos or uh, tracing artwork things that have to do with design because it doesn't use as much uh, computing power okay in your opinion best practice for maximum line length should be 
maximum line length i've never heard of anything of that sort uh, maybe i'm yet to reach it in university but i don't think there's a rule for it i think it's uh, kind of based on your personal preference and what is readable to you and your team i find it 79 characters may be a bit problematic to read <laughs> but um in c i i have plenty of lines like that <laughs> I don't have them as much in Python, but I do have them in C++. Or if you do a dictionary comprehension that is very convoluted, you, you can get there for sure. Um, for sure, guys. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, last few comments, guys. This time, I really mean it. I really mean it. Okay, you would see. I'm about to disappear, you guys. I'm about to go. Uh, you have a YouTube uh, tutorial for unit tests. Um, no, not yet. Not yet. But uh, I, I did... I actually I submitted a project on it not too long ago for my university. Um, yeah, I, I can do that. I've seen a bunch of uh, I, I've seen a bunch of requests for unit tests. I'll definitely cover it. Uh, it's on the list. I think you would need two computers for filming, uh, web editing, uh, use a video capture card. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Uh, or use WSL command prompt. That's what I usually use on Windows. Yeah, that's um, so in the Android tutorial. Uh, Sorry, in the in the Python to Android tutorial, W um, uh, Windows, what does it call it? With will something Windows Linux system? I can't, I can't remember. I have it on my Alienware. It comes for free, so I was able to install an Ubuntu terminal on my Windows, and that's how I done it from. A lot of people are using that too, so you don't really need to have. Windows subsystem for Linux. Thank you, Katrina. What would I do without you? Excuse me. What's what's going on here? <laughs> okay, you need to join our moderating team. Um, if you if you want to, please join us on Discord. The guys will welcome you there. Uh, they're ready. They're ready. Uh, well, I, I hope they're ready. I think Badger is not here anymore because I don't. They're not supposed to be here for the entire stream. The, the, I never tell them when the stream is gonna happen because I I don't want to I don't want to bug them. You know, if they're here, they're, they're, they're here because they notice they have the time. And, uh, yeah. Uh, have you have a Pi game video made in mind? Well, I do have a Pi game video, which I showed you not too long ago. Check it out. Yeah, create a simple video game with Pi game step by step. Check it out. I do have it there. Uh, okay. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining this amazing stream. Hello, hello, and bye, and, and hello, guys. <laughs> hello, guys, and bye-bye, guys. <laughs> you have a fantastic day. I'm about to go because my camera is about to uh, disappear on me. It's getting overheated. It, the battery may run out. There's all kinds of stuff that can happen in the background, especially with how hot it is uh, in the office right now. You can tell by my shininess. But yeah, guys, um, bye bye. Uh, ciao, ciao, uh, my friends from Italy. Uh, bye bye, JA. You guys have a fantastic weekend. I will see you soon in a brand new Django tutorial. Or maybe decorators. There's still time to vote, even though I don't think decorators might win, but definitely check out my recent poll in the community post where I ask you what our next tutorial will be all about. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Tobbs, for staying awake for so long. I really appreciate it, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.